Good afternoon and welcome to Resident Arcade, everybody. It's Wednesday night and we are live. Hi. As you can see, I'm joined by Sam, Stee and Lou tonight. For those of you who are new to the show, Resident Arcade is a game show. Every week. <laughs> it's every a game week. show. <laughs> every week. I do the same there thing. There are prizes. It is a what show. do we win? It's a show about games. And you win prizes. <laughs> no, you don't win any prizes. prizes. We, we are your prize. Um, this is a, a show about games. We talk about the games industry. We talk about gaming news. We talk about games we've played. We talk about potentially sometimes game development. Not that often, but sometimes it comes up. Um, just to said four blokes from the north of England, wittering on for two hours about games. So, in tradition, we start off with... Well, I've, I've forgotten a, f a few times over the last few weeks, but we uh, we do swear on this show, so if you're easily offended, offended then please uh, turn off now. But basically, we start off with a, a list of the games that we've been playing, and I think we're basically all playing the same things still. We we haven't really, apart from Lou, who's not playing anything because he's not really a gamer anymore. I'm gonna I'm gonna remove his gamer badge. I'm gonna <laughs> gamer remove, badge. Yeah, I'm gonna remove. Give me your... a game to me. Game to me, yes. Um, a gam a gamotom a game to me. Um. So yeah, I've been playing quite a lot of Terraria this week. Um, I've not actually been playing the game much. I've just been building, if you know what I mean. I've just been setting up a little base for myself. But I've also set up a dedicated server and I'm sat kind of waiting for you guys to come back to me and tell me when you want to play because you were all up for it last week. But Well, I've, yeah, I've, I mean, I've been away, but I'm really up for it. I'll probably even play it tonight if you're around. Um, what, after, after the show? After yeah. half nine? Ooh. Oh, I actually do have to go in the office tomorrow, so it's an early one for me. Mind you, I'm getting up. Waiting on you now, mate. Then waiting hey? on you. Waiting <laughs> on you. I'm, I'm no, no, you're not. So just letting everyone down. Um, I'm sat here waiting for you most bloody times for everything, you bastards. Lives. How dare you? You need to get married. That's what you need oh. to do. Get married and have a complex job. Anyway, um... <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> You sit in front of a computer all day going, ah. Oh, that's it, yeah, go on, go on. I do applied <laughs> mechanics. Right, What's it's, what, uh, there's not much difference really, is there? There's I'm, fucking loads of difference. I, I do some pretty complicated stuff, but I'm not saying it's more complicated, but, you know. You, you have to have... You, <laughs> you have were inferring have. that. No, I'm not, no, I was actually, yeah. Whatever, I'm better than you. Right, um... So yeah, I've been playing lots of Terraria, but I said I've just all I've been doing is kind of I built a hell tunnel because I could do that in about two seconds with my original pickaxe, and um, kind of just built a little bit of a area to store things. But I haven't. I, I, this is in one of my own worlds, so if you guys, when we do play it, want to use that world, that's fine. There's not much. I haven't really done much in it. I haven't been in the dungeon. I haven't killed. I've killed two bosses actually, only because they spawned. King Slime spawns in the middle of the map now instead of on the sides of the map where I used to spawn. And the Eye of Cthulhu spawned because I have over 200 health or something like that. So if you want to start a new world, I don't mind. If you want to start new characters, I don't mind. You know, all strike from, from probably scratch. Probably not, probably not. I think at the very least, it's probably, if, if you do want to start, it's it's one of those it's it's difficult to think a lot of people i was being i was playing with what um earlier on this week actually and I'm playing a little bit on his server and i started a new character for that and he um oh, we've lost day already wonderful um he'll be back he will uh, and, and uh, well, i started playing with what and, and some of his mates and it was that they i came in on my i came in on my uh my like uber tweaked character twinked character and they said no nope, sorry too high level too you got too much gear you can't you, we're already only on meeting your armor that's so they started off from scratch but they've got a quite a good base going but it's one of those it's like do you if you start it with good items and then you're in a brand new world that's one thing but it takes so long to get some of those good items and get it to a pop but, but you can also think about it in terms of you're not really experiencing the bosses the early bosses the same way because I just nail all the bosses at the moment, so it's one of those things I think we need to discuss and see if we uh, mm. see which is a better option. Yeah, we'll sort it out. We'll sort it out. How how is the new um, patch then? Tell us a bit more about what's well, changed. The the, on, the only negative thing is that I've crashed once or twice uh, while I've been playing it. Um, the, there seems to be a dedicated server in this patch as well. I don't know if there was previously. I can't remember if there was one. <clears throat> But the problem uh, with the, if we did have one previously, it's that the, the, the dedicated server is not that good. It doesn't automatically save. Um, it doesn't have any kind of advanced features in it. You can basically reset the weather and that's it. 
uh, you know you can't register players or set off fireworks in people's faces and stuff which is what That's I basically true. spent all my time doing last time um, but I've got I said I've got a dedicated server set up so whenever we want to play just to sneak, turn, turn my computer on um, so what what I've seen so far in terms of the differences there are each boss now drops a treasure bag um, and the treasure bag has got one kind of, if you play an expert mode one kind of expert level accessory in it uh, for example the Eye of Cthulhu drops a shield and you can now dash with the shield uh, and hit, hit enemies with it King Slime drops uh, accessory that makes all slimes friendly to you right if you play in expert mode which is the new new like easy you start you can start off in expert mode now but there's expert hard mode as well there's a number of changes to um how the how the gameplay plays out more enemies spawn different types of enemies spawn they drop different loot there's um different biomes as well or there's different areas i found a marble area for example with loads of cool marble stuff that you can you can loot and and make stuff out of uh I think most of the there's AI changes as well to all the bosses, but I haven't really experienced any of that yet. The most of the stuff that is in the changes in in the cha in the patch rather I haven't seen yet because I've been waiting for you guys to kind of stick my you know stick stick everything into it. But uh, generally speaking, is it is it enough to to warrant us playing it again, or are you just have you just gone back for the nostalgia? I'm like, I'm thoroughly enjoying. It. I'm I, at the moment, even though I'm just building a little base, I'm still enjoying it. It's a great game. Right. <laughs> I think there's still plenty in there to go back to, personally. Okay. Um, shall I read out some of the things on... Uh... I, mean, I don't think we need to uh, read out all the stuff. I think we read some stuff out last week, didn't we? Or we talked about it. Um, through our I'm not changes. sure. We did, talk, we did, we did talk, yeah, we did. We did cover a lot of the stuff. Actually, there's a whole there's a whole raft of it. I'll paste it into chat for anyone who cares. Even though TDR biz says Terraria sucks. So, thank you for that opinion. Um... Apart from that, I played. I haven't played much Arkham Knight, but I played a little bit of it, only because I'm still waiting for a patch, and I don't really want to experience it. You know, not as good as it can be. Enjoying yes, the game, sure. but just wait. I think I've got too many other things to play and do anyway. So, and um, uh, I haven't played too much Witcher Three, but I've played a little bit. I've been playing just pure Dark uh, Arkham Knight. I haven't played any Witcher Three for a bit. I need to go back to it. Um, uh, yeah, it's really good. I mean, it's very much a case of if you've played the other games, you'd know a lot of what to expect. There's lots of tweaks and stuff. Obviously, the Batmobile's a huge part of it, all the combat stuff they do in the Batmobiles. It's quite good, but there are times when you have to do certain Batmobile things and you'd kind of just rather be Batman on foot a little bit, mm -hmm. um, which is quite a common criticism of the game. Now, it's not to say that the Batmobile stuff isn't good, but the, the first two games you know, were really built on the... The, how much fun it is just being Batman out in the world and when you have to be in the Batmobile quite a lot of mandatory sections um, and yeah it sort of feels like you want to get back out onto the streets a little bit on foot sometimes. you want to be, be, be the unisex hammer of justice again the unisex hammer of justice yeah I saw, I saw something online about uh, <laughs> about Batman's um, policy on uh, hitting women which was the hammer oh, right. of justice is unisex <laughs> Right. Uh, yeah, I think I think Batman would would hit a lady if it was the right <laughs> appropriate thing to do. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure you do in the Arkham City. I think you just knock Harley Quinn out with one punch, don't you? At one point, she's like, "Oh, Mister B!" Just like bang, because <laughs> <laughs> that's what Harley Quinn needs. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's really cool. But if you've not played it much, there's not much else to me to talk about since um, the other two guys have never played any of them. I said I played but, ten hours of it, not this week, but I played ten hours hours of it last week. So I've played a fair amount. I just I'm enjoying it a lot. I mean, what are things I like about it is that they brought in more of the uh, the so called Bat family. So you've obviously already got Barbara Gordon, Oracle. Um, you've got Alfred now in it, which is nice. Mm. Uh, Nightwing's shown up. Lucius Fox is in it. Nightwing showed up. Robin. Uh, Robin. Robin's been in it a bit. So yeah, I really like it. And there's also some stuff to do with the. Uh, the, the, the Joker who's, who died at the end of Arkham City in this you know version of Batman. The, the, this is what well, I think you'll have hit it now. So this is what I was talking about last week when I said there's a cool joke. There's a cool Joker yeah. mechanic in it. Um, the Joker's kind of you, you basically start hallucinating the Joker. So the Joker's with you, but he's not real. It's hallucination. 
which is pretty cool. It's one of those things that I'm sure by the end of the game, Batman's going to get rid of it and be like, I have cured myself. But it makes the game fun just having the Joker around. Mark Hamill's so good at doing that role. It's just, it, I want him around. He's just a fun, funny he is, guy. He is really, really cool that he's just sat there constantly taunting you. That's awesome. Yeah, and I really enjoyed that. Saying horrible part. things to you as well, like really horrible. Like most, it, obviously, it's all just Batman having his most darkest thoughts personified as the Joker. But it's just really cool. It's just really a nice little touch to put into the game. And there's loads of little touches as well in the environment, like certain posters will suddenly have the Joker's face on them. And you'll do something and come back and be back to normal again. There's loads of th like, little statues on the sides of buildings will look like the Joker for a minute and then not. There's loads of subtle stuff like that going on. There's, cool. I, I like the, the way they introduced it as well when you when you first get that hallucination. when the, you're basically, You know, like the, the Scarecrow moment in mm. the first game where you, you go into the morgue and then you turn around and it's different and then you turn around again and it's different again. They've got that kind of thing going on. Uh, with yeah. that game, which I like, I really like, I really like that. I don't know, I don't know how, I, I, I don't know how they implemented it, but I think it's really clever. Yeah, it's cool. So yeah, Arkham Knight on the PlayStation Four with no PC issues is a very, very enjoyable game to me. I've been putting quite a lot of time into that in the past week. Have they managed to uh, fix the PC version yet? The, uh, there's not been no. a patch since last week. That even though it is a priority, apparently, but you know, I mean, I got mine free anyway. I'm not saying I can complain about. It. I'm going to complain about. It. Not going to. Hang on. I'm not saying I'm not going to complain about it. Um, but I can't exactly get my money back or anything, you know. So I can imagine if you're a PC user who who paid full price for it, though, very upset. I I'd, I'd have that. if I paid for it, I'd have to, I'd have got try to get my money back and then uh, bought it again when the, the issues are fixed. Well isn't this a thing that haven't Steam? I don't really use Steam much because I'm not. Obviously, I don't play on PC. But um, they started issuing. Uh, you can do get Steam refunds now, can't you? Is that mm. is that a relatively new thing? Or yeah, it's last. The idea of is that if you if you get something, it's just not good enough. You can get a refund for it, which in in the long run actually might make developers book up their ideas about their PC stuff and go, well, if we release something that's crap, people are just not gonna. They're gonna want the money back, and we're gonna lose money. And they're also gonna get twelve thousand negative reviews like uh, again last time i checked this uh, yeah this will have hurt that game quite a bit oh yeah. the console versions are good or not it's got to have hurt it in the minds of a lot of pc gamers so yeah there you go it's interesting because uh jake solomon the uh the guy who's responsible for um xcom enemy unknown the remake and xcom 2 um said the other day uh, i think it was yesterday in fact that we're living in a pc gaming golden age at the moment yeah and I kind of agree with him, but I also think there's kind of weird neglect going on as well. I think the games, the games are getting a lot more attention in the wrong place. That I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know <clears throat> the figures. I don't know why consoles, why, why the console seems to be the main aim for a lot of the AAA games these days. Is it because it's a bigger market? Because I know the PC market's still big, but it's not. It's not as big as consoles, is it? I don't know. We'd have to actually look at the figures. I, I think, is it possible that, say, something like, um, let's say, like, a really good one to pick, because we pick them all the time, an Assassin's Creed game comes out, multi-platform. So do you think that it probably sells more units on the two main consoles yes. than on PC? Because yeah. I, think, I, think, I, I think that they probably do. Because, yeah. because PC gamers would not put up with the amount of bugs that are in Ubisoft games in general. I mean, you could you could you can relate a Call of Duty then or whatever, which for all you people might slag them off. They tend to um, sort of work mechanically. Call, Call, of Duty, Call of Duty is a very very big PC game. A lot of people play it on PC as well as consoles, but I don't know. I don't know the figures. I have to be honest. I think probably a better one to compare is Battlefield Three or Battlefield Four mm. to see how many people play well, that PC versus console because it seems to be quite evenly split. Anecdotally, I would have thought, but with Battlefield Three, because again, it's more um, there's more control bindings, there's more. Uh, I think there's more benefit to playing it on PC. That I think more people do play that on PC than Call of Duty. Call of Duty is an arcade game, isn't it? Really, an arcade shooter. Whereas Battlefield yeah. Three is more leaning towards the simulator kind of. It's not a sim, but you know what I mean? It's leaning more towards that. It's not, here you go, he's a massive ICBM because you've killed six people. You know, you can, that kind of, they don't do that. They... <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, I think, uh, I think that there's possibly a little bit of uh, the fact that Sony and, and uh, Microsoft 
they advertise their, pro their products on their consoles as well separately. So a pl there might be a PlayStation advert for Arkham Knight. Do you know what I mean? Like it would be like Arkham Knight, and then it'll have a little PlayStation logo at the end of the advert, or it might have the Xbox One logo at the end of the advert. Whereas you don't actually see that for PC games as much. I mean, I don't, I don't know what it is, but there's not the same sort of juggernaut marketing force behind a lot of well, who would big pay PC for the games. On PC? Well, that's what I'm saying. They don't have they don't have a specific yeah. unit. You know, there's not like a specific gaming PC company that's there. There's a PlayStation company. There's an Xbox. You know, subdivision of Microsoft that will be doing their own job of promoting stuff that's on their console. So they, they get that sort of uh, exposure because they're paying for it, don't they? I think okay. PC games is more Battlef word of mouth and stuff. Battlefield Three sold 2.76 million on battle on uh, PC. And on both Xbox and oh, hang on, I've clicked the wrong link here. Uh, on Xbox, it sold seven point one two million, okay. uh, and it's uh, I don't think I've got a link for the. Oh no, that is a PlayStation Three link. Oh, this guy has Noddy's bloody posted two PlayStation Three links. That's why. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's that for the PlayStation. So I imagine it's equal, roughly the same for Xbox Three Sixty. If, if not, if not more, probably. Yeah. I think. Uh... Xbox 360 is more known for people playing shooters on it. I don't know if that's true, but it seems to be more people tend to play them and talk about them on the So, so let's anyway. say that the console market probably is bigger in general for a AAA games. So that's why PCs doesn't get as much notice. Uh, when we say golden age, I don't know where you've heard that quote, Lou, but it's probably... Um, it was yesterday. It was uh, basically, it was Jake Solomon from who's working on XCOM 2 at the moment. Right. Well, you get in, I think... For what it seems to be on PC, as much as there are issues with it, you seem to have all genres and tastes are, are currently being developed and catered for. There's been a massive resurgence in, um, you know, old school games as it were in the past few years. And you've got current developers making games that are in the mold of old games, but obviously a lot more polished, smoother, better looking, but with the same fundamental mechanics and whatnot. And you've got all the new high tech, whatever, you know. Witch of Three and Arkham Knight or whatever else you've got going on as well. I think that's so, what he was referring to. If I read the quote out, he says it's a tip of the spear in terms of innovation in types of gameplay being explored, in relationships between developers and their audience, and for Firaxis it's our home. It's where we want to be. Although they are going to be producing um, tablet and console versions of XCOM 2, no doubt. <clears throat> well, it was a tablet version of the original XCOM, wasn't it? Say, a tactical game like that would it not suit itself quite well to tablet? It does. Gameplay. I think it does work quite well. The um, XCOM enemy unknown. I think it does work quite well on mobile. Yeah, I can see that kind of working on a tablet format in a way. Out of the four million copies sold for Witcher Three, one point three million were for the for a PC version. How many so, for each console? I can't find figure on it. I don't think they've released them. Uh, I think you're going to have a certain amount for Mac, aren't you? Yeah, that's not a massive discrepancy if you split in between. Yes, a few for Mac, but probably not that many. And then probably between the Xbox One and the PS4 after that, because I think it's not. They won't be on the old Xbox 360 no, and PS3, no. and they won't be on the Wii U either. Because I don't think that could ever could have a dream of running that game. Plus, Nintendo are not really that big on having games that aren't Nintendo on their consoles, are they really? I think they've had a few. I think they've had a few Ubisoft games. Like they've had an Assassin's Creed game on the Nintendo, haven't they? I'm sure there was one yeah, had or a something. Call of Duty games on there as well. Have they? Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm struggling to find anything about The Witcher Three. I think it's still too new, really, for for any real figures out there. There's a lot of speculation, but it, yeah, yeah. Um, any other games then? People have played this week. Um, I played a game called Road Redemption. That rings bells. I think I mentioned it. It's it's basically an indie remake of Road Rash. Right. Oh yeah, I think you did mention it. Uh, um, it's it's fun. Uh, it's it's very arcadey. Uh, on the surface of it, it seems it seems quite complete. But the more you play it, the more you kind of see the holes, the gaps that are there. Um, it's it is still early access. It seems like it would be fun to play. On, a LAN or something, somewhere where you've got local people where you can kind of shout abuse at them as you smack them over the head with a sledgehammer. <laughs> um, I also, I can see it being 
very, very short lived. Yeah. As far as the entertainment. I used to oh, love Road Rash. Road Rash 3, especially, was fantastic. Mm. What a brilliant game on a Mega Drive. It was fantastic, but were many old games that long lived when you think about it? I mean, no. the, the games like that, I mean, specifically, because they're very repetitive, aren't they? The same. They were. I mean, the tracks were basically, you could, you know, there, there was nothing to them. They were a straight, well, not a straight road, but pretty much a straight road. No branching, no obstacles, really, apart from random trees on the side of the road. But it still, I don't know, it still had packed a lot in there for what it was. Uh, the yeah, the attractions of the original Road Rash, though, or the original Road Rash series, was uh, the split screen mod. Hmm. There was a game on the original PlayStation called ESPN Extreme Sports, which was like a spiritual successor to uh, Road Rash, and that was absolutely brilliant. That it was that, quite good, that game. That was an excellent game. I mean, it was nothing to do with sports. It was just basically Road Rash on skateboards or bikes or something. Yeah. Or the Street Luge, which was the best one. Street, Punching yeah, the people street. in the ankles. Street <laughs> Yeah, that's oh, the thing. Yeah, Road Rash, that, actually, yeah. One of the things about Road Rash that I liked that I think actually was kind of spiritually carried on in the Burnout series was the, 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 the and also Wipeout had this as well. Yeah, oh, this, was the idea of taking out you other the races that are in the race into you knocking them off or destroying them or whatever, which Wipeout did. I love the weapon system in Wipeout, which is kind of like a like a techno version of Mario Kart, it would yeah. faster. <laughs> And in my opinion, a bit, a bit, a bit better. But, um... there, was, there was some games that tried to do that, like um, Carmageddon and Destruction Derby, where they did it a bit too well in that you could take out all the other opponents to the detriment of racing. You didn't have to race, you just yeah. drive backwards, take all the opponents out, and you'd won. Yeah. Like, I don't remember actually racing in Carmageddon, I just remember chasing people around the map and killing them. Well, I didn't even know Carmageddon was a racing game, I thought it was exactly. a game. Exactly, yeah, you could, you could a... race. So oh, I, only, okay. I only ever really, I mean, I played Wipeout a little bit, but uh, Roll Cage was my favourite kind of. Roll Cage? Yeah. Play, was that on the N64? Mates. No, it was a PC game that we used to play at LAN parties. Um, it was very much Wipeout ish. You know, you'd go around a track and you'd go upside down and you'd collect power ups and that kind of I stuff. But that. but it was it was just loads of fun with, with mates. Um, but it stopped working, like after maybe the. Pentium 2 kind of days, when Pentium 3 started coming out, it stopped working for some reason. I think it was something to do with Direct3D or the version not working, Adam not being supported anymore. I can't remember exactly. But I've still got it. I've still got an installer of it, but it just doesn't work. So this Road Redemption then, does it have a lot of the same... You know, other, you know for example, are the races like the same as the Mega Drive ones, or is it a lot more tight turns and, you know... what? Um, not really. It's it does feel kind of the same. It feels a lot looser. Um, you can speed up and slow down and catch up to people relatively quickly, but that could just be the single player version. Uh, mm. When you play it with another person, that might change. It also seems to uh, to, to cheat a little bit when you come to uh, to attacking your opponents. Like you'll be speeding up past them, but then you swing your racket and you just like kind of level up with them and stay there until you finish swinging. And I'm looking you, at, I'm looking at the video. You do seem to lock on to the other players, yeah. don't you? Very well, strange. It'd be difficult to do it without that, but it's it's really noticeable when you're playing it. That 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 same mechanic was in Road Rash, though. People would catch yeah. up to you, or you catch up to them, and then they would stay beside you until you, and you duke it out until one of you won. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And then you do that thing. I don't know how you did it, but I remember I had Road Rash too, and then sometimes you could like nick the weapon off them. Yeah, and you then could um, twat them with it. Yeah, if they if they were holding the weapon up to hit you, you could punch them while they were doing that it and it. steal the weapon Take off them. It. I'd always go for Sven because he had a crowbar, which was the best weapon. I want to get. Uh, you can have chain. up to three weapons, but the winner with five, you can get like an Uzi. Oh, <laughs> no more guns into games like this. You can get an Uzi. Um, you can get a sledgehammer. Uh, baseball bat with nails in it. How, a sledgehammer? How do you ride a bike and fucking hit someone with a sledgehammer? <laughs> using one hand. Time? Using one hand, yeah, obviously. <laughs> I could, yeah, I could kind of get like, a, you know, a police bat on. It's kind of like a fairly light thing, or a crowbar is relatively light, or a chain. Sledgehammer is pretty. The point is, the point is that they're heavy. Like, it'd, it'd, be, be, like... it'd be hard enough if you had two feet on the ground <laughs> trying to hit it's someone with a sledgehammer, let alone <laughs> one handed on a bike. <laughs> exactly. Um, one of the funniest things about it though is like the ragdoll effect when you crash because you always do crash um, you, like, you'll just plough straight into a police car or something, ram the back end and just fly off the bonnet and bounce down the road for half a mile that's that was quite the, 
Yeah, that was another joy of um, of Road Rash was you get right near the, the best part about Road Rash was when you get to the end of the race, your guy would be just doing this. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah, and then a car would crash into you as the camera was pulling out. <laughs> That was, that what, was, was um, what was that bike you had to uh, cheat to get in Road Rash 3? The, vibe, the animal or the beast? The animal, yeah. So I think it was the animal and it had like... It had, like infinite uh, nitros. Yeah, it had a lot of nitros or infinite. I can't remember which, but it was ridiculous. It was black and orange, wasn't it? So I remember playing air level on that and a nitro up a hill and basically I just completed the rest of the map in the air. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. I, I was there, I think. I remember that, yeah. Did you, did you ever play Stunt Car Driver? Stunt Car Racer. Was it Racer? Or, I'm sure, I don't think the one I, I played was Driver. I think it was a Commodore 64 one and you, it was rubbish. It was absolutely terrible because it was about two frames a second and you'd be on top of this like platform. It was like a roller coaster thing. That's some kind of racer. Right, okay, kind of racer. racer then. So you, I, I could never get around the track ever. It just fell off every time I did any, tried to do anything. You had to get just the right momentum up to go around like a, a loop to loop or go around yeah, the corner. If you went too fast, you'd crash. If you went too slow, you'd crash. Yeah, and it was it was totally un, not analog as well. It was just basically forward and backwards in your joystick. I used to play that on the Amiga. Yeah, it was. I think you probably had a slightly better frame rate on the Amiga, but. It was just awful, slightly. awful. Hello, oh. Colin thirty eight in uh, thirty five. It's red. I can't see it properly. Uh, Colin thirty five in chat. Yeah, but, um, Welcome to the show. It might be a good game at two o'clock in the morning next time we have a LAN. Yeah, I'm I'm up for having a having a play. Yeah, I'm sure you can get a, a six pack for two pound or something. <laughs> might look at it. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of want to play the uh, Road Rash three now. I've got it downstairs, I think, Road Rush 3. Uh, Mega Drive version. Won't be as good as you remember. No, no, yeah, no, 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 none of those games are. Yeah. Buggy Boy was another one as well, I used to play a lot. I used to love Buggy Boy in uh, the spectrum. Th that was very good, Buggy Boy. I used to spend hours playing that with mates. I used to like Kickstart. That was really Kick buggy on the, the spectrum. On the Kick Commodore Start. 64, it was, uh, it was just insanely difficult. It was a side scroll and more bike one, wasn't it? Yeah, Basically, you know, like trials. speed right at you. If you're on a fence, you couldn't go too fast, or you'd fall off. But when you're on a hit, uh, on a like a brick wall, you had to go really fast in order to clean this. So it was all about managing your speed and your like pitch of your bike. The um the Sinclair Spectrum version it was it was split screen, but the the bottom player was really buggy. Like he'd fall through the obstacles and stuff like that all the time. Even the computer player would do it. Like there was some something wrong. Like all the priority was on the top player, and the bottom player just collision detection was screwed. It was hilarious. You just see this bike going through the floor constantly. There was. Um, I was looking at some uh, screenshots of it now. There's a, a, uh, a top top down isometric, not isometric, top down game called The Last V8 as well that I used to play, and I could never get up around the first corner. You, you, you just you, you pressed accelerate until you went fast enough. You had two minutes or sixty seconds or something, I think, to complete a map, and by the time you got to the first corner, you were on something like fifty-five seconds, and it was just you, you just smacked into everything because you, you know because they're not you know like the GTA kind of top-down view because you couldn't see what was coming up and you didn't know when to anticipate a break, so you basically had to learn the map in order to get around anything. I think I think I got around a few corners once, but gave up on it after that. Oh, driving games. Yes, we are. We're we're di digressing slightly. So no other games then, guys. About games. Yeah, we are. We are. Um, have we have we played any other games then, or is is that about it? I played with my balls. Apparently. That's what, that's yeah. <laughs> that's good. That is that a game? Is that the Viz yeah, it game? Can be. Maybe Buster go it's an, uh, We can make it a game. Access, if you want, Chris? Let's say it's an early access game. It's, got about <laughs> three, it's so far got about three quid on Kickstarter. Beta. It's a beta. <laughs> Um, right, okay, so let's move on to the way of the exploding list. Oh, we all did it! We all did it! <laughs> I was going to be cool and not do it this week, but... Uh, I don't know what that noise was at the start. No, I, I sounded like you were, you were being touched in the wrong way, <laughs> to be honest. You had a visit from really old Uncle list. Bad Touch. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so yes, the way of the exploding list is a section where we just basically spring a list on some on, on us. Oh, in fact, if anybody in the audience has an idea for a list of of something that we can we can talk about for fifteen minutes or so, um, 
favourite protagonists in games, uh, least favourite guns in games, uh, I don't know. I haven't really been thinking of anything for weeks. Some people have been jumping in with decent ideas, so... Anybody well, got, got any um, ideas? Some a little bit. Different, like, favourite mobile game or something, or top mobile games. I've only played, like, two mobile games. But... Yeah, it's not really <laughs> good, though. No. I mean, I've played a fair few, but not enough to really quote on them. And thanks for the Ooh. thanks for the follow, Colin. Mythalot um, has asked favorite mod. Ooh. I like Ooh, that. I, I, I like that because that's quite but... wide ranging as well. There's a lot of different types of mods. The only, the only Sam's, gonna, Sam's gonna Sam's gonna be left yeah. out. <laughs> Sam, Sam, being console gamer, does not know what What's, mods are. What's a mod? <laughs> I know what they are, just don't get to experience them. You can, you, can, you, can, you can include DLC in this then, Lou, uh, Sam, but we can't include DLC because it's evil. I think we've already done DLC. You just go on and I'll just tell you that it's shit or good, whatever right. it is. Well, Rocket Arena 2. <laughs> Rocket Quake Arena 2, 2, yeah. Has to be the first one. Because I, I, I've easily had the most fun in that ever. Out of any mod, it was so... It was community written and it was so well done and so... It just didn't have bugs in it. I, do, I don't remember there being any issues with anything, and we we played so many hours of clan games. And it was fairly simplistic, though, wasn't it? It wasn't the sort of thing that really bugs could appear in. Well, the maps could have been shit, couldn't they? They could have been designed badly, or well, some of them really, were, I suppose. I don't think so many. Quake Two was one of those games that felt like it was made from concrete. It didn't feel like you know a lot of three D games where you could kind of you'd go through the walls a bit, and it would all feel a bit like you were stood on polygons. Whereas Quake 2 felt like it was made of solid stuff. Yeah, it did feel solid. And so it, when people made maps, they generally felt solid. The even, game felt solid. Even my awful ones with BSP leaks all over the place, they were still fairly solid. Mm. Um, other mods then? Um, yeah, can, 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 I, can, I throw, can I throw just a few that I've recently used, actually? Um, and only because the, the, the base game is a little bit... It's not horrible. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of the, the, na the game of the name. Name of the game while I'm sort of wittering. Don't starve. Right. I know. Oh, cool. There's, there's, there's a couple of mods that I had to get on that. One was a map mod, so I can actually see where I was, see, so kind of see where, you know, where I'd been and that kind of thing. And another one was, um, one that made the game non-persistent. If you know what I mean. So, you, sorry, made the game persistent, so it wasn't a. Uh, my god, what's the name of those type of games? FTL type games. Roguelike. Roguelike. So it wasn't a roguelike. Permadeath. Yeah. It was a, a non-permadeath mod. It actually made the game fun for me. Because before that, I just... I, I was like, ah, it's, too, it's too difficult. I've invested so much time RPGing it up. And then it takes it all away when I get attacked by a... a a load of rabid hounds one night just because that's the, what the game decides to do that night and I've got no way of killing them so she just gets stuffed there's um there's a mod for XCOM while we kind of mentioned it before um called long, The Long War has anyone long heard war. of it? I yeah. have and I the, they've also did a version of that for XCOM Enemy Unknown as well didn't they? <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. XCOM Enemy Unknown. Oh, right. Oh, sorry, I thought you were talking about the original X XCOM. No, 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 no. no this I, is actually... I put you onto this a while back, I think. I, I pointed it out to you, but I, I haven't played it. Um, I've been looking at this. It, it just it adds, um, it adds an extended campaign. You can have up to 12 soldiers in a mission. Um, and just loads of extra stuff. Loads of, it's a longer, harder game with more tools and toys. And as we all know, things are better when they're longer and harder. Yes. It's the end. Someone had to get that in there. Well done, Steve. It's except one of the for, cool things. Uh, except for, the... like, being tortured. Or cancer. <laughs> yeah. One of the really cool things is um, there's an overhaul strategy game. So the aliens actually go around and gather resources and research and stuff. So the aliens are kind of playing the same game as you are. Yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah. Which is yeah. pretty cool. A lot of this is, like, kind of what the original game does. The aliens are on, they've, got, they've got their own missions as well. And you can interrupt them in the middle of the missions. They'd be trying to build a base, or they'd be supplying bases. Or be. Did it not have more maps on it as well? I think so. Yeah. I it's think... got more content. It's it's really what... there's a lot of it. One of the criticisms of uh, Enemy Unknown is that the the maps aren't procedurally generated, and there's a lot of them. But you get to know them eventually. You get to know where the enemies are roughly going to be. But yeah. there's, there's, I think I think if I'm right, Long War kind of removed that a little bit, and the enemies were more random. 
at least and there was more maps so there's also the new game i think the the, the new announcement that's going to have procedurally generated maps as well i think to get rid of, get over that problem uh i don't see anything about maps but uh, I'm, no. I'm sure they will have done that i mean there's there's 50 odd maps i think in the original game but it's still obviously because you're not procedurally generating them you're going to see the same maps with the same enemies in the same places really especially if you play it as long as i have anyway yeah I hammered that game to death um i would say city skylines um because there's quite a few mods that are available now that are community made but one of the ones that is especially useful just be well i, I find it anyways uh one that actually allows you to build in the entire terrain oh. um it's the game starts off and you can choose i think it's 10 out of 25 two kilometer square squares to build in but that means that you've got more than half the map unable to build up on Right. And if you want to build like a mega kind of structured city, which I always have the intention of doing, it kind of scuffers that a little bit. So that's one of the ones that I've been using quite quite right. a lot. Um, you've got to, I've got to give a big shout out as well to the Sky UI mod for Skyrim on the PC, because without that, that, you can't really play it on the PC. That was on my that was on my list, and there's also the scripting one as well for um, it's Sky, Skyrim Script Extender, I think it yeah, is. Yeah, that's so. that's necessary, isn't it, for for yeah. a lot of the good mods. I there's know a... there probably some loads and loads of fantastic mods for Skyrim, but there's so many out there that it's hard to actually put together a nice cocktail and play it's, it. It's been that long since I played it. I did actually get quite a nice combination of like a UI mod, an inventory mod, and um, like kind of a, a control system mod, and map map markers and things like that. You could add extra stuff into the map and. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Did you get the uh, Bachelor Man Randy Savage Dragons mod? No, but I saw the <laughs> video. That was enough. That was enough. Oh, yeah! Yeah! Yeah, brilliant. Um, another one for Skyrim, actually. There was a mo there was a mod that uh, every single one of your houses that you bought, had a tr you could have a trapdoor in the bottom of the house, and it would go down into a trophy room. And it was basically a big um, corridor, big, big like hallway with loads of mannequins and loads of weapon racks, and basically you just hoarded all your stuff. To, for someone like me who I loves, I bet you that, love that. Oh yeah. my god, so many containers, so many <laughs> containers, and and everything was there as well. All of the crafting stuff, everything, absolutely everything you needed, and and all the trapdoors connected all your houses together. So you could basically basically go in one trapdoor, and then they were all in the uh, like those five or six in the line along the. Uh, the way you could you could just literally go from one house to another within seconds without having to fast travel to the next point. I should I should point out to viewers who aren't regular viewers that if you go back and look at some of the um, screenshots of us playing Terraria, you'll see that Chris does really like containers. I love his his house was basically chests with walls around them. I've already got about twenty five chests in my little uh, Terraria. <laughs> world so far i love hoarding i don't know why you should be called chest <laughs> you, uh, well I, I'll, I'll give you i'll give you a, the the a little anecdote about oblivion when you know when you used to get um encumbered and you'd just be stuck you couldn't yeah. move i wish I, I, there might have been a mod for that actually to stop you doing that Probably was. what i'd do is i'd drop whatever items i was over uh, encumbered by have just enough you know whack my inventory up either fast travel or, or go back to my my house put everything in my containers then go back to the place where i dropped everything no matter what it was it could have been a potion you know anything and i'd go back and get it and i'd, <laughs> I'd start so you just again. you just became basically a, 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 an ebony warhammer haulage company yes yeah. yeah in fact one of the other tricks that i had was i'd go into a dungeon i'd get as much as i could in the dungeon and then i'd kind of walk back to the entrance drop everything at the entrance that I'd, I'd got then go back into the dungeon do more come back to the entrance and then i'd just spend about another three hours afterwards hoarding absolutely everything for hauling everything from the dungeon to my house and <laughs> or selling it to merchants or whatever you know i just I love it i said in the witcher i've got about i've got about 25k gold or something now and god knows how much stuff oh now we're going on news actually I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute there's some witcher news obviously yeah yeah there is um there's still loads of mods i i mean you, you know you've got to give honorable mentions of things like counter-strike i mean we weren't yeah. big fans of counter-strike well, but the initial it release was, was undeniably quite... well yeah it is a good it is a good game it's just been ruined by people who play it to death i think people who get it's obviously not just the hacking and the community and the people 
you know who get get really antsy about and, and really protective about playing that kind of game it's the the fact that people play it constantly get really good at it and you just can't go in and play it casually anymore unless you're with some friends renegades are tribes <gasps> my god yeah best mod ever best yeah. mod ever would Sticky you class um, Nazi zombies for Call of Duty as a mod isn't that built in it is built it's, in it kind of is built in I just think we're getting Sam involved here uh, yeah, that wasn't really a mod, though, wasn't it? A, wasn't that like an extra game mode? Yeah, just a game yeah. mode, really. It was built into the game. Are there any notable mods for console stuff? Or is console basically devoid of mods? It, I can't think there's, a, there's any way to even distribute them until now. I think Fallout 4 is going to have introduced mods that are cross-compatible from PC and they could, um, to be console. Fair, the fact that uh, consoles have been online since the PS3 and 360 and uh, whatnot, there's no reason why there couldn't be a way to purchase them and install them. Though. It's again, it's protecting the the hardware and protecting the platform. That's why they don't do it. I think one of the main reasons, probably why, is that until very recently, consoles have not had storage. There's been no way to actually install a mod. Hmm. Yeah, and now that. they've got quite a lot of storage. You can start to download stuff and have extra content that way. So no. maybe, maybe soon, you know, console gamers will get into this because. More, I'm thinking back, mods are a big part of my gaming history. A lot of stuff that I Even enjoyed as like, being a mod. There's so much Quake 2 mods that we, so many of them that we played. We played yeah. one that was a Space Marine mod where you could walk around as, um, uh, in fact, it's on, it's on one of the, the, the intro um, screenshots on our on the, on the stream. Um, you could walk around as a... Space Marine? No, not a Space Marine. You know, the, the big... Dreadnoughts. You could walk around right. as a dreadnought, and we used to play that and just fire rockets at each other. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And the toilet was wiggling a, your bum. I remember <laughs> Q-Pong, That was good fun. I think I enjoyed that more than anyone else. Saw. Jump as well. Capture the flag. Yeah, that was a mod. Yeah, originally. That, in fact, I mean, capture the flag for Quake wasn't that like the first kind of incarnation of capture the flag? Uh, I think Team Fortress came before capture the flag, possibly. No. No. Team for the original Team Fortress is very old. It was one of the first mods. Uh, this is not Team Fortress Classic, this is Team Fortress for Quake 1. Oh, right, oh god, I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, wow. it was, it, yeah. Well, the, the, there's all the other mods, there's King of the Hill, that was a mod originally mm. for um, Quake, I think Quake 1, possibly, maybe even earlier than that. What about Gary's mod? That's what I've heard a lot about, <laughs> but I don't really know what it is. Well, Gary's mod is, is it's an open sandbox, basically. So the the, the base game is you, you go into a Gary's mod world, you've got a map, and you can place items and you can manipulate the items, you can do things with them in an editor-style world. But okay. the intention of it is that you build your own game modes inside it, inside the source engine. Um, <coughs> Gary's mod... Was Gary's mod in the original Half-Life or, as well? No, it's Half-Life 2. Okay, so I think, yeah, because it was because of the physics, wasn't it, that they brought yeah. it out? Because that's what, it was cool to play around with the physics. Um, so yeah, the, the Gary's mod, and, and basically there's loads and loads of different, like, community-built mods that they've done for it. That murder that I've talked about a few times, that's in Gary's mod. Um, there's a few others that I'd, I've seen, but I haven't played many more. But it's interesting how people manipulate it and make it into their own little game. It's interesting to see that there's, there's certain games on the horizon um, that are very, very kind of mod friendly, and that seem to be getting a big presence on on consoles as well. Like I say, Fallout is going to be supporting mods on the console. Um, the Unreal Tournament stuff, um, the new Unreal Tournament is going to be a modable game. It's going to be a game built from mods. In fact, it's going to have its marketplace and. Basically, you'll you'll play mods on it rather than play a base game. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, it, it seems to have kind of died down a little bit, but it's it's getting more popular again now, isn't it? I think it's easier these days as well because you've got the steam on PC, especially because you've got Steam integration. Previously, then, and, and there's obviously an API there somewhere. I haven't even looked at it as a developer, so I don't I don't know how comprehensive it is or what it's capable of. But there's obviously the Steam Workshop that you can integrate into your game somehow. But I don't know. I mean, previously, remember how much effort it was to get a mod working sometimes. <coughs> well, yeah, having the right version and stuff like that. Steam yeah. takes care of all that. You just subscribe to a mod, and when a new version comes out, it automatically gets updated, just like the game does. But then you've got the the, the Elder Scrolls uh, Nexus. 
uh, kind yeah. of mod update that tried to make that easier as well. But that's what they need in consoles, and now they've kind of got those. I think, again, web APIs have kind of really pushed things on, you know, web services that allow allow developers to easily integrate into almost anything these days. That's that's what's probably pushed this on, I think. REST, you know, all the, all the other technical stuff that... Mm. Probably half the viewers don't care about. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, any other mods you can think of? Probably loads of them, but I don't want to keep bleating on too no. much about mods. I think there's, like I say, thinking about it now, a large majority of my the enjoyment of games has come from mods or rebuilds well, or remakes or, or, or fan, fan built stuff. Total conversions were a big thing at one point. If you yeah. remember now, I think I ha, um, a lot of Doom, the total conversion. Doom had them. Yeah, well, there's been a few, hasn't there? I mean, um, Brutal Doom's a complete kind of rehaul, uh, overhaul. It's not isn't a total it, conversion. Doom? There are, there are. I think there's Alien vs Predator for Doom or something like that. There are total, total conversions. So we're setting up a Duke Nukem and Doom where they replaced everything, which is the whole point of a total conversion. Now, if I remember, I remember rightly, there was a total conversion of Unreal or Unreal Two that was an RTS. Basically, they used the Unreal Engine or they used the Unreal kind of game, base game, and changed it into an RTS. Mm. And that rings Can't bells. From... Was. I know that, um, I know that uh, the one for Half-Life, um, Natural Selection, that was a big one. That was an RTS game slash FPS game. Right. You could play that from above. You got like a special command of you, a bit like um, Battlezone. Where you'd view the map from above and start placing turrets and stuff down. Oh, well zone. I wish that was a slightly better game and everybody in the world loved it and still played it. It's so brilliant. I love it so much. Battlezone two specifically, not not one. <coughs> All right, so let's uh, let's move on then. If we're uh, running out of mods to talk about, let's move on to the uh, gaming news. New announcements, anything that's uh, popped up that's taken our fancy this week. I actually thought it was a quite a slow week this week, but we've uh, I've managed to grab a few articles uh, that we can we can talk about. Let's get the obligatory Witcher stuff out of the way. Um, new 1.07 patch coming out. At, yeah, 1.07 patch, and it actually sounds like a, quite a considerable update. This, and it sounds like yeah, it there's does. a few cool new features. Uh, specifically, there's a, there's an alternative optional movement response mode for Geralt. I, I'm so interested in that because I've not said anything more about what that means, no. but I find Geralt to, I mean, Sam mentioned it in the first time we talked about the Witcher. Geralt moves very grid-like because of his animations needing to finish. And yeah. if they do something to fix that, then that will be great for me. I, I'm probably turn it on as well if they do something to make him less loose again when you when you stop I, I like things to stop when i stop the control system you know i've kind of got used to it but i still occasionally find myself getting stuck in a corner because i've missed you know i've overshot something or something you know it's, it's indoors that it happens usually and it it's outdoors it's not a much of a deal but i yeah. mean even when you turn on walk mode it's still like right it's either really fucking slow or it's Okay, you know a little bit slow a little bit slow fast 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 fucking smack it all you know <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so interested in that, especially if it's not optional. Again, I like the fact they're making it optional because there'll be some people who want to, to keep the original control system. Mm. Um, play a stash for storing items. Finally. Now, there's been some talk about this because you can put items down anywhere in the world and they'll stay there. I know we as gamers don't like doing that because a lot of games will bite us in the ass when we put something on the floor, walk Little, away, yeah. come back and it's gone. But in The Witcher, I'm sure that you can put things anywhere it does, and it will stay there. I've left there. things in the entrance where it caves before and they're still being there and I forgot to pick them up and went back in. I later. do not but trust that. It's not a very organised way of doing it. <laughs> no, not it's, too, it's too ingrained in me, the, 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 the pain of, of, of things being lost when oh. you've turned around. Like, how many times, like a, like a Grand Theft Auto, have you gone, right, I've got this really cool sports car, I'm literally going to walk around the corner, come back and it's gone. Yeah. Like that thing of like, I can't put anything down that's not within screenshot that I can see it. For me, because I don't trust it to be there when I come back. For me, it's more about small items, putting them down on the floor and them falling through the f fucking geometry. That's <laughs> that's what I'm afraid of. It's not necessarily that I don't trust the developer to make it persistent. It's the it's the collision in the games that I don't a trust. Little, a little aside to that, and maybe you talk about the same game I am, but uh, Borderlands Two 
the the um the golden key crate room in the middle of sanctuary right there was a bug with the floor if you were in there and you dropped it like just say you'd loot the crate and you'd say oh right, i've got a rocket launcher but i don't use them do you want this you would drop it on the floor and it fall through the floor just of that room the one room where you're going to be dropping things quite a lot, really good items, and it always fall through the bastard floor. That might be done on purpose. I think it maybe it was, but it was just like so annoying. So many weapons just fell through the floor and landed in the Costa Cavern somewhere. Randy Pitchford fucking doing that before he pissed <laughs> off. Probably, That's it. yeah. He's like, um, so oh, yeah, there's an all sorts of Being able stuff. to store things would be fantastic, but that doesn't really fall in line with the whole. The Witcher story. No, yeah. but I don't think I'm going to use it that much in The Witcher. I have to be honest because I don't want any items. I don't. There's apart from my um, decoctions and things like that. They're the only things that I probably store. But yeah, but they're way nothing. They like weigh nothing. But I, what? I only use maybe four or five of them. But I've got twenty, and it's like I can sell them to a merchant. The merchants return their inventory when you sold it to them. So. But again, I don't quite trust that. I think that it's going to reset at some point. But then again, someone's can... going to come in and buy them all. You can't. <laughs> yeah. um, you can't sell decoctions, can you not? You can. I you can that... sell them to one person in the game, and it's okay. that same person that I uh, I gave uh, you guys the the hint of where to sell uh, tr uh, trophies. Mm. In fact, you can sell anything to that merchant at the maximum price, and you can buy everything from him at the minimum price. So he's basically he's got five hundred gold, I think. But he's basically the best place for you to sell and buy stuff. But you have to keep coming out of the inventory, going back into it, buying loads of his shit, and then selling him an item, then coming out of the inventory, going back into it and doing that repetitively. See, I'm, I'm not finding money a problem in The Witcher. I no. think at the minute I've got about 45 grand. Yeah, it's. I don't, not, I don't it's need not. any money for anything. I don't, I'm not buying, I don't need it to buy anything, really. Yeah, I don't buy anything because, either. Because I've got all of my Witcher um, gear. I, I don't want any of the armor. I'm not interested in anything. I said I've got about 25 grand spare, and I've got nearly every single uh, recipe in the game. So, not much point is there. Uh, but anyway, the, the, the stash location is also marked on the player's map as well. So you know you can go back and get things, etc. Crafting and alchemy components no longer add to the overall inventory weight. I don't find that a massive problem. I don't either, babe. No. But you, I you said you did. I, I've got a f an inventory capacity of about 160. In fact, it is 160, and I'm normally bouncing between 120 and 160. But I'd say that probably about 30 of that maximum is my uh, uh, my crafting and alchemy components. Yeah, it's I've limited swords myself and to armor. 30 of everything. Swords and armor, um, weight is yeah, the take up. The trophies take up a fair bit of weight. Um, uh, I yeah. think I think it's my I have to say I think it's my um, my alchemy stuff that's taken up most of my weight. Yeah, I think it is for me as well. Unless the stuff that you're wearing also takes up weight. I think it does. If it does, then that might be what's taking up a lot of weight as well. I do wear medium gear though. I'm still got. I'm still on my uh, until I get the wolf armor. I'm on my griffin armor. Superior, I think it is oh, at the moment. Uh, the next point is something that I think should have been there from. If I'm going to have a gripe with the game, this is one of them. So, yeah, the, the, books. the book, books are now placed in a dedicated tab in the inventory. Yeah. And books and that have already been read. Having the ones that you've read grayed out. Are grayed out, yeah. That's I a, also a nice would thing. like it so that when you're looking at alchemy components, you could see what they're selling versus what you've got. Yeah. Like, there's, they've got 50 for sale and you've got seven. Yeah, that's re that'll be really handy, but not now because I've nearly fucking completed the game. Yeah, they would have been handy at the start. Yeah, and it's, I'm not some sure. Some of that stuff was really cl clunky, wasn't it? Some of that, some of that stuff that, like, some of the menu stuff in in general, like when you initiate a game of Gwent or just go to a shop to buy, and you've got to always do that little bit of dialogue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. before you buy, it doesn't just open the shop, which is what you want to do. And you've always some got to then say farewell. You can't just like quit out of the shop. Yeah, you can't just then really say, quit. "Yeah." It, I wouldn't mind if it was uh, if it had some variations as well. But every merchant is the same every time you speak to them. I don't want that. I just want to open a shop. I yeah. don't want to go there and hear a little bit of small talk. I don't. From I don't mind that the first time I go, but after that, I know it's all skippable. Which is again, kudos to CD Projekt Red for making everything skippable the first time you you experience it as well. If you really want to skip something, you can. Good, brilliant, excellent, but. Yeah, just, just let us open a bloody shop. 
I kind of feel that way about shops in real life a lot of the time. Like, I, don't, I, I, I don't want to have to do this talking shit. Like, here's the stuff I want, here's the money for it. Like, fuck off. <laughs> yes, I'm with you there, I'm with you there. Um, so, yes, multiple sorting options are now available in the inventory. Again, improving the UI. Brilliant, excellent. Yeah. Not that bothered, though, I have to be honest, because I've learned that if you have just picked an item up, it's asterisked. It's got an asterisk over it. And then if you reorder your inventory with F, um, then the asterisked ones will always be at the top. But if you yeah. mouse over all of those and de-asterisk them, essentially, then reorder, it'll reorder them back as it was. So that's the only way you can do it at the moment. Mm. Not that bothered, though, about that one. But it's nice. Nice that they're in there. Uh, alchemy formulas and crafting diagrams can be pinned. Oh, meaning like all that. components and ingredients required to make them will be conveniently marked in the shop panel. That, sorry, you said that just now, didn't you? Sorry. Yeah. That's brilliant. That is awesome. Uh, really dozens of fixes for quest-related issues, both major and minor. There was one place, I, was, I did a quest in Novigrad. I don't know if you guys have done it. You, you end up in a warehouse and you get accosted by a dwarf. Didn't ring any bells? No. No? It's anyway. Where? To, uh, in, in Novigrad, um, and you, you, you end up in a warehouse. There's a, a dwarf guy that was at. I think, actually, it's after the Gwent tournament. I think it's one of the dwarf guys at the Gwent tournament. Anyway, after you've been in there, I mm. couldn't get out of the warehouse because the exit door, it opened, but for some reason, what had happened is the two polygons that, were, that formed the two doors, they opened up, but they opened up and stretched as I opened it, so they were still connected. But <laughs> like that, and it's, it's just really weird. It's like, I took a photo, I took a screenshot of it, I was like, like freaked out by it. But luckily I managed to hack my, like, I, I climbed up a wall that I shouldn't have climbed up and, and managed to get on the ledge that I dropped in into the warehouse and in the first place. But I don't think I was supposed to do that. <laughs> and it was just mm. sheer luck that I could get out. Cause I was like, how the hell else am I gonna complete this quest? I'm hoping they fix the uh, closed city quest as well because I've still got that in my inventory from like level eleven, uh, and I can't complete it, and it's just annoying which, that it's there. Which one's, I can't closed, it. which one's closed city? I remember that. I can't remember. It's ages ago that I did it, and I did it in quite a few different sections. So I think, um, I think I've completed that. So yeah, I'm hoping that they've debugged whatever it is. I've got one failed section of the quest, but it hasn't failed the full quest, so I haven't. I don't know. There's some some bug going on there. I've um, I've still got uh, that fool's gold mission, which I can't complete because I can't. Uh, I can't speak to the pig because it's fallen through the geometry. Yeah, I've done that one, yeah. That's, uh... See, we need these games to be solid. For the scale of the release and the size of the team, I don't hold any grudges. No, against. I'm really impressed Even with, with the failed missions, still. there's still plenty to be getting on with. Yeah. I read yeah, some. Exactly. I read some uh, article to this week about The Witcher uh, 3, uh, CD Projekt Red needing lessons in pacing uh, and uh, scaling. Uh, basically to do with the fact that there's so many missions available to you as as basically any level i can i can go and complete any mission now i can go and complete a level 40 50 mission um because of the way that my character's set up and it doesn't really i don't i don't really struggle fighting enemies anymore so it's a bit it's a bit weird i understand it but at the same time it's like i still still really enjoying completing ticking things it's off my list near impossible to get that right though to get to get scaling and to get balance in games right you know look at how many patches blizzard still keep releasing for games that have come out five ten years ago because they're still trying to fix the balance in them and they'll never get it yeah the only that. way you can get that balance right is to make it so the game is extremely linear yeah hmm. and a game that's open-ended yeah and a game, a game is open-ended is 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 uh is this you're going to get soft locks and quests. You're going to get all these kind of problems. And they will kind of get shaved off, but you're still going to have balance issues. You always I, are. I still find it challenging uh, <coughs> to, to fight groups of low-level enemies occasionally. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not really dying now, but it's still they still pin me down occasionally and, you know, knock a bit of health off. You, just sometimes, because... get, uh, you can sometimes get stun-locked, like caught off guard and get a bit stun-locked by little little yeah. neckers or something if they all just go eh, 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 you're just like right stop i can't even block now like leave me alone 
Oh, that could still happen. I've just completed the final fighting quest, you know, the arena fights. Oh, that's a fucking... That, that's annoying as hell when that happens. Uh, which one are you talking about? Because there's a couple of end ones that... I like, haven't done the last one yet, but in one uh, of the arena fights... Okay, don't um, spoil the last two I'm fights. I'm not going to spoil anything. But basically, you get yourself in a scenario, like Sam just mentioned there, where you get hit, but because like, you're up against a wall or an object, you can't deflect forward. But you can't block in time, you can't dodge, and they just end up hitting you, and hitting you, and hitting you, and you're like, fucking move, 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 move. Yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've just done one where there was a bug in the quest in that <clears throat> the, the Bucky comes out, he walks out into you when you, you, you talk to him, you book the, you, 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 you say, I want to do the fight, and then he stays in the middle of the fucking arena for the entire oh. match. So you try, you're basically <laughs> jumping around him, and every time the other guy, because it, it's quite close, the camera, when you're fighting someone, it's it's really difficult to see when the other guy's throwing a punch at you, so you just keep getting bloody hit by it. But I've managed to finish all that off now, and I'm uh, quite sure. The, the, the ends. Is that the um, the Fist of Fury thing you're talking about? Yes, Skelliger's the, 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 I think it must be the last. It's got to be. I haven't, I've done Moibagrad. I haven't finished. I haven't done Skelliger yet because, as I say, last time I played it, I just got to Skelliger. Again, if you time, it's all about timing. So, I mean, I've just completed, I think it's a level 32 quest or something. But I've, mm. I'm, I'm level 25, maybe? I don't know what I am, actually. Yeah, the fist fights one on one are actually really easy. You just got to counter and punch them, counter punch, counter punch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's there's a couple at the ends that you would think would be harder than they are. Put some interesting concepts in it anyway. Excuse mm. me. Okay, so lastly, a few performance enhancements, including optimizations of FX scenes and general gameplay. So that means I might be able to turn hair works on, maybe. Although I'm not used to maybe. not having hair works on. It'll probably freak me out a little bit. Um, I like very, the last one. Various improvements to horse behavior. Good. <laughs> Because the horse is... <laughs> Frankie the Tory pick pops up on your screen occasionally. He gives you some tints. Yeah, or or, or it might, you might be able to get over a bridge without the, the horse bolting backwards. Just because there's an invisible wall in front of you. Which happens yeah, to the, um, way the, too the often. Fact that, the fact that Roach just randomly, as you gallop along, just goes, and stops. It's really quite annoying. And it makes me do a lot of my exploration just on foot. Because I'm like, do you know what? The horse isn't actually that much faster. Because it, it keeps bugging out and, and randomly not wanting to go places when I could just go there on foot. I think I, I think it's handy for going anywhere over like 500, 600 metres, but before that it's, it's yeah, 100, 200, 300 metres, I just run it. I'm just like, fuck this shit. Yeah, and you can usually fast travel any further than that, to be honest. So, so one other bit of Witcher 3 news before we move on to every other game. Uh, Witcher 3 news, Siri outfit DLC was leaked early on Xbox Live. Uh, Dev warns not to download it because it's not ready. It was an accident. And it's free DLC as well, so guys, heed the warning and don't bother. Leave it. I don't know if they've pulled it or not yet, but, you know, wait, wait your turn, basically. That's what we're saying. Uh, right. So, you guys, I know you put a few articles in the chat. So, in the document. So, any of you want to pick up any of yours? Um, I put in the No Man's Sky... 18 minutes of pure gameplay footage. Yes, thing. I've just watched that. Has anyone else watched it? I haven't watched yeah. it yet. I've got to watch it, but whatever. <clears throat> I tried to watch it now, it makes sense. Before, like, before you critique the game, can I just say stop erming and umming and fucking every five seconds? The guy who was presenting it was just going, um, um, um. Is get someone uh... who can present, mate. If, if that's your pro I know I witter, but for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> is this is this the host or the, no, uh, the, dev. the guy playing it? The yeah, well, he's a, dev. A, he's a developer. Yeah, but that's not that's not good enough. That's not. I, good I enough. think I don't think he's too bad. I think he's not. He's nowhere near as bad as John Carmack used to be in the early days. Is he is he approaching Jeff Goldblum levels of um? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, oh, no. This uh, but is the, a um... uh, uh, spaceship. Uh... Yeah, but that's uh, that's just his personality, isn't it? It well, is. anyway, the the video is um, it's pretty good. It's it reminds me of Spore for some reason. Can I, it, uh, it, it, can I just chip in there? Yeah. It's not eighteen minutes of pure gameplay. Is it? It's not. There's a lot of cutting to them playing. Yeah, um, it's but it's eight minutes of pure gameplay. There's a fair bit of gameplay footage in there, and it gives you an idea of what you're supposed to do in the game, because for, for a long time now, there's not really been any indication of really what you're meant to do. And the, the key to this game is exploration, seemingly. 
there are many ways you can play it. You can play combat, you can play it as trading, um, but it seems to be the main gameplay mechanic is that you explore and name things and get money for exploring and name things, naming things. Do I use it as well, that whenever you get um, these people doing like a video review or a video preview or whatever have you, why are the people that are controlling the game always really shit? Well, they're not always. If they're, if they're doing E3, then they're pr usually pretty good and they're usually very scripted and very on target. But this kind of thing, this is kind of a, a late on development preview and it's an indie game, remember? So there's a lot of value at the moment in the fact that the indie developer is doing the presenting and he's the public face of the company, you know? I think that's probably why, why he's doing it. Mm. Plus, he knows most about it. My my general view of that video is, uh, I'm still not sure. It looks awesome, but I think yeah. it's going to get boring very, very quickly. I agree. I think he showed off everything that that game has to offer, pretty much in that video. Yeah, and there's not a lot there. No, there's a lot. It's going to be procedural, so it'll be different. Your sky will be a different color. Your mountains will be a different height. Your trees will be different. The monsters will have a different stripy pattern on their ass or whatever. But it's still going to be the same basic stuff. I hope it isn't. I hope that they put in. Well, that's a lot why. That's more how procedural works, though. I mean, let, let's be. Let's be honest here. That is how procedural works. You get many different variations of the same thing. But, that's yeah. what procedural is. If it isn't that, it's random and it's shit. <laughs> yeah, there has to be some constraints and rules, yeah, of course. I think, I th yeah, the, the main focus is exploration, isn't it? And I don't know if, if that's going to be enough. I don't know if that's interesting enough or the worlds are interesting enough to to warrant hours and hours and hours of gameplay, which what what it should offer, being as big as it is. Mm. Well, looking at that, it kind of brings me um, the planet-based side of it. Anyway, it kind of brings me in mind of that uh, the planet explorers that we played. Yeah. Yeah. Which was fun, but it didn't really it 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 didn't make you want to go back and play it. Not planet explorers. I'm hoping there's building in this game as well. I'm, I mean. About the, the, the way that the dev presented it he said that you can do whatever you want in this game you could spend all of your time on one planet or you could, I could find a planet name it Seabock World and live on it you know, but can I build on it can I make an economy there can I make a, a, a space station up in space that does my trading with, with passers by, you know that kind of, that's the kind of thing that would keep me going, coming back to it, can I make a base with loads of defences, can I maybe set up a base and have uh, you know, set up a, a world of uh, a, a military world or something, and have and declare war on a couple of other worlds. That kind of thing's interesting. But I, if it's just exploration, walking around and looking at, as as Lou said, another stripy ass or a dotted ass on another planet, probably not going to be interested. The controls don't feel look like they feel very nice. But he was playing it on console. Yeah, which all developers have to do now for some reason. Yeah, I don't get it. Oh, what, what, what's he doing? What's that thing in his hand? It's a mouse. No, it's not. It's not squeaking. Anyway. Is it not so that they can stand there in front of the audience with a controller in hand and play it? Is that not why they do it? They could do that on a mouse and keyboard. I suppose they could do, yeah. And they can occasionally move the hand up if they want, like they would if they were the hands on, hands on a control pad. It's wrong. Control pads are wrong. I agree. It's, it's the end of it. <clears throat> right, so um, there's another there's another uh, game that I, I've just read last month's PlayStation magazine, and I, I swear to God, I'm not an, a, an advocate of them. I, I'm not a salesperson for PlayStation magazine, but I keep talking about it because they, they've always got interesting little stories in there. There's a game called uh, Screen Cheat. Uh, I don't know if you've watched the video. It's just under the No Man's Sky thing. In fact, do we paste the No Man's Sky footage into chat? No, I don't think you did. Let's uh, put that in there for them. Well, there's a game called Screen Cheat, and basically, it's a bit of a tongue-in-cheek game, but um, it's a, a game where everybody... Yeah, it's, it's a four-to-eight player, or two-to-eight player multiplayer game. Everybody in the arena is invisible, and you have to basically look at other people's screens in order to figure out where the other people are. So it's a, it's a playing on that whole... You know, put your a bit of cardboard over your screen so your mate can't see you while you're playing at a LAN party type thing, you know? Like, lots of people over the years have done. Um, 
but it looks quite interesting it looks quite cool i think it'd be it'd be interesting to play have a look at have a look at the video anyway and uh yeah. paste that in chat for everyone as well you're not listening to me are you yeah no, absolutely <clears throat> I am. Just, I just haven't seen it yet. Just so it really sound like it's going to be fun after the first ten minutes. No, and looks... you have you have to be with other people physically there to do it, right? Then yeah. no, so no, you can't no, do that. No, as think... we all know, I hate other people. No, no, you don't have to be in the same room. I don't think. I think it is a split screen on your screen, so you get a portion of your screen to play. Oh, it, I see. I and then you can see other there. people's screens, so you have to work out where they are. There's obviously more to it than that. If you fire, then that reveals your position. There's lots and lots of different types of weapons. It looks like quite a lot of fun. It's had a fair amount of like YouTube coverage as well, but I only just saw it in a in a magazine, so it's, it just sounds like an interesting concept that's maybe worth a, a blast if it's not too expensive, you know? <clears throat> Four packs, 30 quid. Well, it's not too bad, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. It could be quite good fun. It could be a mod that, couldn't it though? It could he very easily be a mod for Quake 2 or something? Or Warsaw or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um PewDiePie. Oh. PewDiePie, however the hell you want to pronounce it, earned seven point five million dollars in two thousand fourteen from YouTube revenue alone. Yep, don't care. Next. <laughs> why are we talking about that? I don't why, get why why we're talking about him. Because he's a, yeah. be, because he's a, a because he he's a, he does let's plays. Yeah, but why why is that relevant? We know that he makes a lot of money. This is well, this is no, not we didn't news. know. We didn't realize he made that much money. It yeah, is we news. Did. It's all over. It's all over the internet. This. Yeah, it's just because he's just announced it this year. He's he's been making millions for years. It's he's not... been making a lot, but he made a hell of a lot last year, and it's it goes he some did. way to show to showing why YouTube are embracing gaming so much. That he is the most popular channel on YouTube he'll, across he'll... any genre. He'll be making seven point five million dollars. They'll be making double that, if not yeah. more than double that. He, actually, he'll have some kind of partnership deal with them, won't he? But so he'll be making more than normal. But it's interesting that let's plays and stuff like that are the most popular thing on YouTube in terms of subscribers. Is it interesting though? Because that's kind of what I know. YouTube came from people basically doing little vlogs and you know quick quick videos for the mates and that. That's really where it started, wasn't it? I mean, people just going, yeah. Hi, I'm feeling a bit down today. My cat's called Jeff and uh, he just had a piss, you know, etc., etc. You laugh because it's true. That's basically what it's like. There's, there's still a lot of that on there as yes, well. There is. <laughs> um, and then there's Resonance Arcade as well, which is obviously much more uh, highbrow. Yeah, we're much more highbrow and elitist and self-satisfied than any of those channels, so yeah. ignore them and watch us. With our three views. Come on, <laughs> come on, get on. We're, too, get good, on. we're too good. Having <laughs> lots of views is too mainstream. We're too hipster, we're, we're too hipster we're, for, for views. Yeah. We used to have a lot of views and then it went like underground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> our first few videos had at least ten hits. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway, no, right, so it, to me it's not news, but I get... I suppose the, what you yeah what you're trying to get at is is quite an interesting point that YouTube is. I wouldn't have thought the games would be the the, the most the, the most. I, did, I didn't think he'd be the most popular channel. I've never watched any of his stuff. I've flicked through a few of his things. I just think you he's would, ridiculous and stupid. Yeah, you would not you would not enjoy it. It's no, not, I don't. It's I don't enjoy good. it. Good, but I can't believe that he is the most popular thing on YouTube. Well, here's the thing: most popular thing on YouTube. Here's the thing, though, that a lot of the things that... Things like the PewDiePie, they fall into the same category as, as for me, things like the One Direction or anything else that you care to mention that is massively lucrative and popular, but is uh, creatively, or whatever else you want to call it, or it, it, void of anything. It is just a bloke screaming that someone jumped out of him at a game. Every game that he plays, he goes, Ah! I fell over! That's basically what he does for like, the whole... Of, in everything yeah. that he does. That appeals to a lot of, like, people. That just idiots. appeals to a lot of <laughs> idiot, idiots and children and teenagers who are on the cusp of children, on the cusp of being going from a child to an idiot. Like, <laughs> it, it, it appeals to a shitload of people the same way that most crap stuff, the same way that Transformers will always make the, pop the same way the, the box pop, office. Pop music is popular. Yeah, it gets forgotten about in in a couple of weeks' time, you know. Usually, unless it's a particularly good pop song that that sticks around, it's just, and just what it is. I don't, I don't want to slag him off because he's playing the game. He's playing that game very well and been very successful at it. But it doesn't mean that anything that he does is 
like worthwhile or good. Not that I've seen oh, it. it all just seems that to be... he's a massive sellout. No, you know what? I don't think he is. A How sellout. is he selling think, out though? I think he genuinely enjoys because... doing what he does, and 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 I'm happy with that. I'm not going to sit here and slag him off because he's, he's his own brand of of entertainment. You know, it, it, it's it's what it's, some it's people not, like. Though, is it because if you no, look at it just is. the culmination of everything that's in pop culture at the minute combined together, which is why the kids like it. It's a little bit of fucking Joy Essex. It's a little bit of, you know, you see, it's all combined into one. Is someone who dresses in trendy clothes, looks ridiculous, has well um, kept facial hair, overreacts to everything like a drama queen. It's, it's just kind of a culmination of everything that's wrong with society. People, a lot of people. A but I think that's always, that's always what he was. So I, don't think he's, I don't think he's sold out to some sort of corporate thing. I think he's just no, happened I, I to... I don't think it's corporate. Hit, hit. I just think that what he's done is he's changed his personality in order to, to fit into this niche that everyone wants to watch. And that I, is I, I disagree. I don't think originally that was, and I think he became popular because he is the person he is. Whatever that person is, is what is popular. He is, the, he is popular because he is... PewDiePie, that's it. That's yeah, all it out is. Of, yeah, out of all the millions of people that use YouTube and upload, and how many there are that upload videos, there's going to be that one person that happens to hit the nail on the head of what people are going to want to watch, and he happens to be that one. Yeah, that's all I, there is to it. It's I mean, not that I don't think that he's doctored himself in a particular way. Maybe he has a little bit, or he's he started reverberating catchphrases that he knows are popular and shit like that. But I don't. Think, it doesn't seem like he's in, he's not a genuine person at the least in what he does i think i can't really say that about him i don't know i, I don't, I don't think he's well. I, I, don't met I don't think he's disingenuous personally i i don't like any of the stuff he does i tried to watch some of his videos and i tried to sit there figuring out what is popular and what is interesting about him and what is good about it but i can't personally that doesn't mean he's an awful person i'm sure he's perfectly nice in person i didn't say he was an awful person you didn't say he represents he was a what's awful <laughs> yeah okay dick, obviously. you're right you're totally right there and i hate anything popular and new because i'm old you know but <laughs> no i mean i just don't like <laughs> bloody kids popular or new. stuff that's popular for the sake of being popular like i, I can understand some of that is really good that's popular it's probably because it's really good there's but also just, like being popular for the sake of like Oh, this is popular. Why? Because it's popular. There's also a lot of following as well that goes on, if you think about it. Now, PewDiePie, I mean, he was on bloody... Um, he was South on South Park. Park the other day, in the week. He was also on something else I watched uh, yesterday or the day before. can't remember what it was, but it was something that it just did not expect him to pop up on, and he did. And he's all over TV. He's all over... You know, he's, 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 he's famous now because he's popular. And he's, he's going to get more popular from that. And it's not going to stop. It's just a steamroller. That's why Beyonce sells so many bloody records because she said something or did something popular at some point, and she's just—it's just steamrolled it, rolled. And there's lots of money behind it. And obviously, PewDiePie now has that as well. He's got lots of money, not just his own, but corporate sponsorship, etc., behind him. So you know, it's—it's it's just going to continue happening. I don't get too worked up about it, not these days, anyway. <laughs> For something well, that, that was, was a non-entity, we've talked about it quite yeah, a lot. Yeah, that, that, was, that was not news, wasn't it, Chris? <laughs> oh, no, I was responding to your um, clarification on it there, because you did you did say, you did did say bring a valid point in that YouTube specifically is is looking more towards games, but we've also, we've also talked about the live YouTube uh, gaming thing that's coming out. Or oh, has it come out yet? No, it can't. I haven't got an email yet. I've signed mm. up for the email notification. So, yeah, I mean, but... You know, shows shows on um, gaming, sh not this show specifically, but gaming shows on Twitch are becoming quite popular. Live gaming shows, live gaming streams, people playing games for charity, people people playing games for, um, uh, I don't just marathons, people uh, pro gaming, that kind of thing. That's that's getting streamed constantly on on Twitch all the time on Twitch and Hitbox. So it's, you know, the, the, I think the world is, is starting to realise games aren't just for children anymore, essentially, as well. Mm. And I think it's be, it's becoming a, a legitimate form of entertainment for the masses, not, well, I say becoming, it is a legitimate form of entertainment for the masses. Well, the, the people that are the, uh, essentially the, the sort of main mid, not middle age, but you know that sort of adult age, which is what we all are, which is the sort of 30-odd-year-old blokes, all of us... 30 odd year old blokes now grew up with video games and for us they're not a daft toy that we gave up when we were 12 or whatever they, they're still obviously a massive part of our lives and valued you know equally among all the other things that we 
might enjoy books, films, whatever. So I, I think that's going to become coming. It's, it is more the older people who didn't grow up with it and now feel they're too old to get into it that don't really take them seriously. That seems to be the general consensus. Mm. Um, it's it's the all the people that are out of our age group have all had that common uh, shared experience of video games, and most people still have a PC or a console who are in their thirties now. Most people that I know that they might dabble in every now and then or play a lot. How- You'd be surprised how many people don't around our age as well that have never played a game or even uh, or even have any interest in it. I think it's weird when I, especially when I speak to technical people in in my my work who are roughly my age or maybe even younger that have do, that don't play games. It confuses me a little bit. I'm a little bit like not. It's not because I think games are better than everything, which they are, by the way. But it's because I just don't get why people around our age aren't into games. You know. Yeah, why well, they haven't tried it? Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, you know. Oh, I anyway, let's let's move on. Let's move on. In fact, there's a few things going on in uh, in chat. Uh, esports is very popular, which I think is a good thing in the long run. Even had some on yeah. ESPN. That's interesting. I didn't know that it was on TV. Esports. I don't watch TV, so I don't. I know that uh, League of Legends contests and stuff like that. That you're talking prize money in the millions, aren't you? For mm. some of these things, it's it's quite a big deal. Like, esports is becoming a really big thing now. The I've never watched any of them. But. The industry is worth so much money. It was only a matter of time. In the next four to five years, I'm sure we're going to see huge stars and huge channels uh, from like Game Over Year. Ha ha ha! What channels from like Game Over Year? I don't get that. I think Game Over Year. I imagine Game ref- Over Year is a channel. Well, Game Over Year was the, the, it was one of our uh, one of the guys that were. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Mike, yeah. Mike, we had on a while back. Uh, and I went on the, their stream as well, but that game, game over here is very much like this channel, though, isn't it? They don't do. I think they go to E3 and do things like that. And they do a little bit more serious than we do, but it's uh, it's still very much a chat show. Um, right. So next, 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 next. Um, another one I put in was uh, Ark Survival Evolved. This game that we've kind of not really played, but I've seen bits of. Sold a million copies, yeah, and it's I, getting mod support. I keep kind of hovering over that when I, it comes up on the Steam store, and kind of. I've kind of become. I've got blinkers on when it comes to survival games now, because there's been so many of them that I just think they're all going to be the same. They're all going to be early access cash-ins, but apparently this one's really good. It uses a real four engine as well, so it's uh, it's already got all the modern tools kind of built in. Right. Um, looking interesting, to be honest. Looks all right. Looks all right. Dinosaurs in it. Yeah, dinosaurs, and it. I mean, I watched a video. I watched. Um, I watched uh, Yahtzee play it on one of his Let's Plays, and it looked a little bit dull. But maybe, maybe it's not. <laughs> I don't know. But so, it's certainly one we've we've missed. He's probably not the best guy to write unless you're running around as Turok. <laughs> I was going to say it's probably not the best guy to watch a let's play of to get an, an impression of a game True. as much as he does his good his zero punctuation things are one thing but I've, he does that the drowning out series isn't he on YouTube where he does a, like, it sort of talks over a game and stuff yeah he's not very for somebody who's a game critic he's not very game focused on his videos if that makes sense no those the, the let's drown out ones are all but not about the game either they'll talk about the first bit and then that's it yeah Okay, but yeah, I've heard of it. I've heard, I have heard of Ark. I wasn't going to get by the title, but now that you described it, I've, I've seen bits of it. Yeah. So is it, it um, is it is it a fully finished game, or is this another one of these like early access beta? It's early type? access. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Twenty three quid. It does look very pretty. Well, Unreal Engine Four, it's going to struggle to be shit, to be honest, in terms of looks. But the tagline is. Tame, train, and ride dinosaurs in a living ecosystem. Whatever that means. Mm. See, but I've I've just saw. Well, that wouldn't be a dragon. That'd be a wyvern. But it was breathing fire. So a, a fire-breathing wyvern. Uh, I don't know. Sorry, I'm watching a video now and they're shooting donuts. donuts. I was, I was donuts. Sorry, sorry for that. I was just adding a, a, a regular to our chat channel, our chat bot, who, who's getting timed out for probably typing caps excitedly about something. Um, yeah, I can see you guys are struggling then, so let's uh, let's move on. 
Um, there's Ju- a lot of stuff in there that yeah. I haven't put in there. J- Journey's coming to the PS4, which is good news for me because I haven't played the original Journey. Um, but I, I think it is a PlayStation exclusive. I don't think it's on PC. It right? is a PlayStation exclusive. I Here's the thing about Journey. I don't know how much you're going to enjoy it, though. I do like it, but it's the kind of game that I enjoy. It's it's a it's a game where you're literally going towards a mountain. It doesn't give you any... Um, D- don't spoil no, like, anything has, for me. <laughs> it, it's, very, it's very, very simple, though. I can't really spoil much. You literally in a desert and you see, the only thing you can see that is of any interest is a mountain so your natural inclination is to start moving towards it and that's all you do you, you go up and have you go have various things happen to you yeah of course um, it'd be a bit but it's a very, it's, just walking towards a mountain for two hours or whatever it is but it, it is it's a very it is quite a short game but it's it's very atmospheric and very very lovely in, in that kind of way and it has some nice gameplay stuff in it but it isn't a very heavily gameplay oriented thing it's more it is more about the journey it's more about just going there and having the experience of doing it as opposed to having lots of things to do on the way but i don't so i, don't I mind really that. really liked it i don't mind that i mean I, I enjoyed um gone home and that was very much just an exploration game it didn't really have any action or anything like that in it it was just mm-hmm. walking around a house opening doors reading things and listening to tapes that was it really and there was obviously the journey involved in it as well but I, I don't. I, I don't mind that. It, I think I would definitely say give it a go. It, it doesn't take very long to finish, and it is just like a really nice experience to have whilst you're doing it. It's not a very stressful game. It's not got lots of really hard and ridiculous, challenging things in it. There's some challenges, some stuff to overcome, but it's not like uh, you've got to really like grit your teeth and get through. It's more of an experience. Again, the the name is journey. It's like it's a nice journey. <laughs> you have to just experience it it's not very complicated it's very nice there's some really good multiplayer stuff in there as well that's very subtly done um but you have to kind of it, if i talk about it too much i'm going to spoil it for you if you intend it's got really good it. sand in it it has got beautiful sand um <laughs> the sand is so well done it's a graphically really good game i mean i'm not i don't think i'd buy it again if they did a remastered version because i've already got the original one and it already looks great as it was Hmm. Well, I said I, I, it was just a little bit of news. I didn't want to go on about it too much, but it was just something that I'm personally interested in. That I think because I haven't bought the original, I will definitely get the remaster. It's like The Last of Us. I didn't play the original on the PS3, so I bought the remaster yeah, on yeah. PS4. That to me is a good legitimate reason for release, re-releases existing. It actually made me bought, buy it as well because I probably wouldn't buy it for my PS3 now. Thinking no. about it. Okay, yeah. PlayStation Network has been having issues again. Did you experience any of this, Sam? Uh, I've noticed that it's locked me out a couple of times, but that's only when I put the console into rest mode anyway. So not really. I don't. I've not really been using the network that much. I'm not that bothered about multiplayer games, and I haven't signed up for um, PlayStation Plus, which you have to do if you want to play online. Mm. Uh, so not bothered really. Fair I haven't been really downloading anything recently. Just seems to be more, more PSN issues occur. Yeah, nothing that's, there's nothing that I particularly noticed. It, it could well have been, but I haven't noticed it. Uh, now this is this is an interesting one. This is something that what um, just briefly talked about in chat before the Nintendo PlayStation Retro Relic. Mm. Now this is interesting, um, something I actually wasn't aware of and I thought I would have at least heard, got wind of this. Sometime in the 90s, 91 or 93 or whenever, before PlayStation existed essentially, there was a collaboration between Nintendo and Sony and they brought out, uh, well they prototyped up to 200 of these Nintendo PlayStations and they had a public falling out and then that's where basically PlayStation came from. They said they were going to team up with Panasonic. I don't know if that actually happened, I have to be honest. I don't know the details around that. In fact, they may have done for the CD-ROM part of it, maybe. No, because didn't Panasonic release their own, as in the... Uh, CDI. CDI. Uh, again, that may have happened afterwards. But this is specifically about the like this, this collaboration between Nintendo, so I didn't read any extra bits about that but apparently that's what they said afterwards they were going to team up with Panasonic and then they brought the PlayStation out so this is just an interesting it's like it's a one in a million kind of priceless gaming retro relic and some guy who used to work at 
Sony, I think, or the other way around, or used to work at Nintendo, his son has posted pictures on Reddit and just posted a link in to chat about it. Um, quite interesting. Looked quite cool, you know, for, for a retro console. That would be, for someone like me who collects retro consoles, that would, well, and you guys, in fact, that would be... That'd be gold dust, wouldn't it? Just owning one of those. I can't believe you weren't aware of it, to be honest. I wasn't aware that yeah, thought, there was ever a collaboration with Sony. I thought everyone knew that the Sony Nintendo kind of uh, joint venture that yeah. fell apart. Well, I'm sure we've. I've got a feeling we've talked about it. We've talked about this before, haven't you? Well, what we've talked about it. We've talked about it. We've certainly talked about what happened when um, when Square moved Final Fantasy VII to the PlayStation, which rubbed salt in the wound. So Nintendo were kind of holding off oh, yeah. on uh, Nintendo were holding off on on creating um, CD based or disc based things because they wanted to keep cartridges because they couldn't be copied. Yeah, and um, they didn't have enough space. So Square said, "Sorry, we'll go stick this on PlayStation." Because it was originally a SNES bound game, I'm sure of it. Well, uh, the Final Fantasy. Yeah, yeah, Final yeah, Fantasy it was, yeah, was going to be a SNES bound game. Well, six was on the SNES, wasn't it? Oh, sorry, it was, yeah. The previous Final Fantasies were all Nintendo, weren't they? Yeah. 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 And in fact, that's why that's why Final Fantasy's main action button is Circle rather than X. Because on a snares pad, red is your main button. Yeah. A, yeah. I think it is, isn't it? A? Well, the... Yeah, the, a, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. The PlayStation controller is a modified design of a Super Nintendo controller. Yeah, it is. It's the same, offers the same basic template, and I believe the reason for their falling out, and I, I'm sure we've discussed this before, Probably. Uh, but th a lot of the reason that they had a falling out is because Nintendo had a really, really big hard on about piracy, and they didn't think that the uh, that CDs were safe enough from piracy that they really wanted to continue down that route. And Sony, obviously, being quite into the CD technology at the time, I think, obviously, the Walkman, I don't know when that came out, but you know, in general, for them, it was quite a big thing. <coughs> they wanted a, a CD console, so Nintendo wanted to stick with cartridges. Sony didn't, but they'd already started a lot of this work together. And I believe that I don't, I don't sure who it was that fucked you other because I think Nintendo went a certain way down the line with the CD, and then went, "No, we don't want to do it." And obviously, Sony went a certain way with Nintendo, and then went, well, we're going to nick the work that we've done, nick your controller, and make the Sony PlayStation, and just sell it, and be very, very successful with it. Which I don't know. Nintendo maybe were a bit arrogant, a bit of hubris on their part that they thought it, that they would be all right because the N sixty four was a competitor, but it wasn't. It didn't beat the PlayStation really, did it? It no, didn't. It didn't. Not. The PlayStation no. came out as a new console and was a big hit. You know, N sixty four was a good console too, but it didn't Play deck it. The original PlayStation had so many great games, though. It was it was held up by the the, the buy in from all of the developers. I mean, it was the first proper three D console. It came out at the same time yeah. as the Saturn, but it had better three D capability than the Saturn. Although the yeah. Saturn had more impressive looking games. I remember seeing Panzer Dragoon on it and Knights and they were amazing looking games. And it's the well, it started a lot of games that have become huge it's franchises, like, you know, things like Resident Evil and that and that started on the PlayStation that are still going now. Mm. Uh, well, that's just how something well lives or dies uh, by the games. The um, the advertising campaigns, the marketing around the PlayStation, which was just so much better than any other console, than anything we'd actually seen. It was probably one of the first times that you'd seen uh, games getting marketed on major mainstream television. And not only that, but it was it was the the audience it was marketing to. We've talked about this before, but the PlayStation was the first thing marketed to young adults mm. rather yeah. than teenagers and kids. Yeah, we and talked it, before it, about, it, about it, uh, it appeared like the t the FHN generation. I only stayed yeah. with Nintendo because I was a Nintendo kid and I'd had Nintendo since I was a, as a child. And this new PlayStation was an imposter. That was the only reason that I didn't go for PlayStation. And at the time, I was heavily getting into PCs, so I didn't really care that much about consoles. And this is probably why I didn't know about all this. I don't, well, it hasn't. Re I haven't retained the information, even if I did know about it, about the, this Nintendo Sony thing. Do you remember mm. the, uh, the the Wolfman campaign, Lou? I, I do remember that. that. Yeah, they have. That uh, was it's... An awesome advertisement. PlayStation and PS2. PlayStation in general PS2? have had some yeah. very good no, was, yeah. campaigns, though, haven't they? A very. It's a very weird one. Remember the whole weird, third yeah. place thing that it did PlayStation Two with that weird alien-looking girl. That was, um, that was that? Chris Cunningham. Is... Chris Cunningham one who did the FX Twin videos, Wonder Liquor and stuff. Was it? It yeah. doesn't surprise me in the slightest because that no. advert was weird, but it made me want to get a PS2. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> what can you say? I think I got a PS2 quite late, and then I got a PS1, like, you know, as a retro console many, many years later. But then PS3, I, I, got, a, I got that when it came out. I got a PS1 you know when it came out. I got it in September 94, I believe. Did that, you get what, it for Christmas? what would have been the. Um, yeah. What would have been Child the launch tower without Ridge Racer? Sorry. I was just going to say, what would have been the launch title on the PlayStation? Uh, Ridge Racer or something like that? Yeah, Tekken. You know that, Tekken was Tekken. Tekken. Uh, there was Mortal Kombat 3, Tekken, um, Battle Arena, Tosh and Den. Um, Ridge Racer, I think Ridge Racer was a, a launch title. Um, Tosh and X- oh. XCOM as well, that's where I played the XCOM for the first time on the PlayStation. Alright, I didn't know that was even on the PlayStation. I think Doom came out a few months later as well. Mm. Do you remember the um, Cyber Razor Cut advert for the uh, Mega Drive? I do remember that, yeah. Guy looked like Russell Grant. Uh, give me a cyber razor cut. Anyway, I'm, jeal- this- I'm jealous of this kid who's got this this Nintendo PlayStation thing. I want it. I bet it does it work though. That's my question. Does it have any games? Are there any games for it? No, I'm sure there, there might be like a prototype. But you know what? Something. It wouldn't matter to me anyway because I don't play any of my retro consoles apart from my SNES occasionally. Anyway, I still I got um, Secret of Mana uh, a while back. I paid a fortune for it on on eBay, and I haven't played it yet. <laughs> Spent way more than it was worth when it first came out. But Okay, let's move on. Next, a uh, new version of Minecraft has been announced for Windows 10. Now, it's not, apparently they're saying, it's not going to be HoloLens-based. However, it is going to evolve over time. So yes, it will be HoloLens-based eventually, probably. Don't care what they so say. The, if- have they said anything then? Because games do evolve over time. Yeah. Well, no. Mm. no. Have they announced anything about what it is? Is it going to be? I presume it's not going to be Java based, like the original. I have no it's idea. It's going to be a rewrite. I have no idea. Mm. Probably not Java based if it's Microsoft now. That's probably what they're doing. Interestingly, interestingly, I was when I was in London at the weekend. Um, on the Sunday, I saw loads of people in Minecraft hoodies carrying um, foam pickaxes and swords around. So there must have been a big Minecraft event at the yeah, weekend. Yeah, it was. Um... Minecraft or wherever it is. Minecom? Uh, yeah, uh, a mate of mine went down um, from work. Well, he didn't go down, he took his kids so down. So it was. 4th and 5th of July. I saw I loads of people. I think I'd rather jump off a roof than go to Minecon. Sorry, sorry for saying that if I've offended anybody, but. Look, it's easy. It's uh, just the same way that a lot of people would say the same thing rather than go to land E3, for example. Yeah. Well, so you, some people are like, I. I, I well, or whatever. Something that you would go to, you Burke. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I mean, yeah, a lot of people say that about Lampires. It's just one, it, going to one place to talk about, like, kind of one thing, I think, it, or, or, you know, focus on one game, maybe, is just a bit much for me, especially for a weekend or a few days it's or whatever. Beca- it's become its own little subculture, though, Minecraft. Now, it isn't, you know, to, to be hyperbolic about it, it isn't just a game anymore, it's become something else. To a lot of people, it seems to have become something else. It's more than just a game, isn't it, now? It's done the Evidently. Star Wars thing of, of living quite a lot on the merchandise. Like, the amount of people I saw in the Creeper hoodie with the, with various Minecraft paraphernalia, mm. there's more yeah, of that there's than a, there is game. There's a, there's a lot of Adventure Time merchandise as well, but there's not a, there's not a whole convention based around that cartoon yet. <laughs> they shouldn't be. Crossed. It should be because it's awesome. But <laughs> do you not think the later seasons are a little getting a bit, a little bit weak though? Well, I don't know because I, I yeah. I'm getting into the point where it's like oh, it's all the all the really weird story stuff they're doing with Finn and his dad and all the cosmic yeah. like destiny stuff is really mind bending for me as an adult. I can't even understand like how a ten year old kid it's, would it's, have any idea what's going on. It's pretty colours. That's all it is. That's it's pretty colours. They like throw it. some really heavy shit in there, though, that's like, kids are just not going to understand at all. Yeah. I know, but... It's cool, though. The, but they, they can come back to... They, the but, then, but then those kids can come back to it when they're older and go, wow, this cartoon was so much more than I actually thought it was at yeah. the time, and it's brilliant. So yeah, that'll like, be a cool thing for them to do in about ten years. It's like us watching Tom and Jerry again. Or going back to the yeah, old Simpsons, can. and I remember watching the old Simpsons and being like, whoa, there's so much stuff in it that I did not understand when I was ten years old. This is awesome. Anyway, so, sorry, we, 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 we are digressing now. I'm talking about things. That was my fault. Sorry about that. Um, Apple, well, I don't know why this is in here again. We talked about it a while back. The Apple Watch sales um, are down by 
Yep. Uh, not down to ninety percent, down by ninety percent. Is that? Yeah. Basically, this an independent company had checked the um, e receipts of sales of the the Apple Watch, and basically no one's buying them. It was like at thirty thousand, and now it's at around four thousand units. Have you uh, seen the adverts for it though? I mean, fuck off. I haven't. But I haven't. But I was told about them. The thing is, it's just what's the point of it? Who wants a watch? When someone asks me what's the time, I look at this. And uh, we can't see you, Lou, or I can't, can't see, see you. At least. You just died. Can you oh, turn, you your, turn your camera off and on again, please, Lou? If you would. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Actually, oh. you know, we've just got. To, we, you don't know how to do that. Call yourself a PC person. <laughs> what's wrong I with you? Can you even, see me? Even no, we can't. You've broken. Even You've broken. I could do that. Hey, he's back. <laughs> that I use that to see what the bloody time is. Yeah, it's 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 the convenience of having a Wi-Fi connection from there to there. It's brilliant. Yeah. Fuck off. That is this them going. We haven't really got any new designs for an iPhone seven. So watch, give us money. Um, I'm. I'd say that I'm interested in potentially interested in maybe something like a Fitbit, possibly maybe. Maybe if I'm pushed, because you need to kind of monitor hit health and all that. Yeah, I thought you had one. Um, that's but, not a Fitbit, is it? No, it's well, Pebble, isn't it? Pebble. Oh, it's no, it's not Pebble. Well, what is it again? It's a Microsoft what is it band. Then? Oh. A Microsoft what? Band. Right. Okay. What does that do? Everything. It's. But it doesn't do. If everything. you read the reviews for Fitbit somewhere, yeah, it's. It, it's the most sensor-rich one you can buy. It's got sensors for everything, even UV. Sensors so you how much UV you're getting exposed to. But it's Microsoft, so no one will buy one, and it'll ne not be supported, there'll be no apps for it. It's... Yeah, we'll see. What's wrong with I actually found out something interesting the other day. Did you know... Well, you probably do know. I'd imagine that you'd know, being in the industry. But, um... Google have to pay Microsoft for every... Uh, Every Android device that they sell. I didn't because know that. This rings bells. They, it's some some as well. They're paying them billions every year because mic because Android is built on Microsoft platforms. It's it's it built using to, Microsoft assets. It was something to do. Yeah, it was something to do with the original um, the original developers when they sold it or when Google bought it. Um, they they yeah they owned the asset or something. Yeah, it was something to do with that. Well, that's weird. Because so, Android's I, based on Linux. It is Linux. Uh, yeah. It's a distro of Linux, but I, I, yeah, it's some. There's something to do with a license or, or something to do with the code or something like that. I can't remember. I'll look it up. Look and find it. I was reading it the other day, but I just kind of thought, you know, fucking hell, they, they are making billions off Android products, <laughs> which is quite funny. Morbas are moving on to consoles. Smite is going on to the Xbox One, apparently. Now I'd, I heard about this a while back, Smite. I don't know if it's Xbox One exclusive or not, but it's a MOBA, and I don't care about MOBAs personally, but but you guys may have <coughs> some interest. Um, I don't know how that's going to work on a pad. Well, they'll work something out, won't they? They're not, they're not daft. They're not going to go, oh, here you go, you need a mouse and keyboard. Must, must. Cheers to that, Steve. <laughs> well, I was kind of joining with you, but you need a mouse and keyboard. Bah. All right, okay. <laughs> Kind of. But then it kind of it was, it was bigger than I expected it to be. <laughs> <laughs> we excuse uh, we excuse you for that, right? Um, I think it, I think it's a good it's a good thing in general that you could like, you get more types of games on a console. I guess it's nice. Well, I don't know. I, I never played a MOBA, obviously. What does MOBA stand for? Is it massive online battle arena or something like that? No, uh, multi mul so. multiplayer online battle arena. Not massive multiplayer. Yeah, See, I've, I've played a few. I've tried to play a few, but I've just I'm, every time I go into them, I'm like, just people t just scream at you for being a noob to start off they with. Used, I used to really enjoy the Warcraft Three mods that, that incorporated those that the, the MOBA style, but it's a very poison community now. If you look at League of Legends or, or I think Smite's not so bad, but certainly League of Legends and the other one, uh, Dota Two. Heroes of the Storm as well. That's uh... yeah. I think it's all to do, again, this is all to do with, not all to do with, but maybe influenced by the fact that it is looked at in a professional light as well now. It, it is part of the esports culture. So people take it very seriously, even if they're not 
professionals if you know what i mean that they think that they are or they think that they're working towards it potentially and that might be that might form part of it i don't know maybe just gamers I are all wankers maybe that's what it I is well we are i yeah. still want a them to do a, a good uh, first person moba i think that'd be fantastic although the ones like battleborn and um evolve. And stuff which are coming yeah well, not not evolve isn't a moba no it's not is it it's a horde it's an not horde. It, it, it's no it's not that it's an asymmetrical uh, team based shooter yeah but uh yeah I'd like to see a good first person one I think that'd be fantastic if it was done right that's all you want isn't it you want everything to be from first person perspective you know the yeah I do viewpoint I don't is like valid third person. <laughs> I, I like above views I just don't like third person I hate Strange. third person why I don't... why do you hate it so much why, Cause, uh, why cause don't you it's see not any in, application it's... for it because it's not immersive, and I like games to be immersive. I'm perfectly immersed immersive. In, in The Witcher 3. You are, I'm not. But well, fuck you. you, you're not important. <laughs> well, sorry then, so that's so my <laughs> opinion is invalid because... It's, it's not valid <laughs> because, because you're, you're, you. your opinion is basically, I'm right. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. <laughs> 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 Right, um, I, I've had, I've kind of avoided this one, but I found an article uh, on some guy ranting about why he's quit GTA Online, and I thought it was a quite interesting read. I read it a few weeks ago, and um, I'm just going to paste it into chat for people. But it is it very, very valid. It's, it's basically what we said about it. It's that it's, it's got so much potential. It's so vast. It's got so much. There's so many things that could be done with it, but yet you spend most of your time waiting around in arenas and just kind of not really doing anything or achieving anything inside the main game, you know? It's mm. it's it's a it's lovely a sparse concept. game. Yeah, it's sparse it, yeah. for being so big. And apparently it's supposed to be uh, there was another thing he mentions in the article, it's supposed to be a a persistent online, constantly changing world. And it is to an extent, but everything kinda regenerates when you go to another map. Mm. You know, whenever you, you The only thing persistent is there's some dickhead flying around in a a Huey Firing rocket launchers like yet, wherever you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's what they meant by it, but yeah, you got a point. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd rather read that article, anyone, everyone in chat. Star yeah, Citizen executive that. producer quits for personal reasons. It's the uh, personal reasons, the fact that the game's never going to come out is just going to keep hyping the shit out of it and selling more funding for the game. Okay, that lose walking up, honey. <laughs> I was just I was talking to someone else about this at the weekend, and it's just like yeah, this game is almost never going to come. I did say it's just said there the game's first-person shooter mode was delayed indefinitely. This is going to happen with all the parts of the game. They're just going to hype the shit out of it and keep selling like passes to buy the game. It's like, do you remember when um when Star Wars came out and all the merchandising wasn't ready? So they give out cards with, uh, like, you'll, you'll get your, your merchandise when it's ready. Did you hear about that story? Have you watched the, the making of Star Wars? The no. first Star Wars? Yeah, oh, the yeah, original I Star Wars. On. I wasn't yeah, listening, basically... sorry, I really wasn't listening. Say that again. I didn't know that. Yeah, the original Star Wars came out and it was, it was so popular and the merchandising wasn't ready for it. And so they, they give out cards with, you'll uh, get your yeah. thing soon, or a little booklet like, or something like in lieu of I the actual product. Want... Yeah, it's like, I owe you one Obi Wan Kenobi action figure card, and you go. But well, can I get the only one now? Yeah, but it was a massive hype machine that drove all these sales to it, and they did eventually get it. But it just feels like this is not going to deliver anywhere near what these people are buying into. It's like they, these people are buying like a plot on the moon, and they'll never ever get there. But they're just constantly thinking, oh, I'm going to have this cool place on the moon and I'll build a castle on the moon and I'll fly around <laughs> on the moon and I'll be, it'll be so cool because I'll be on the moon and you'll never get to the moon. <laughs> but then the moon will be shit when you do get there as well. It will be proper shit, it's, the moon, won't it? It'll just be like, it's grey. Yeah, it's grey, it's cold, there's no fucking oxygen. What are we doing here? <laughs> what is the point <laughs> of this? No uh... fucking oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What's that game? Um, oh, it's just been released. It's an early access one um, where you uh, they basically you've got to build a base on the moon base alpha. 
Have I? Have I? Have I caught It's that? actually sponsored by NASA as well, I think. But yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, you go on the moon and you've got to build NASA. little pods and start generating per oxygen. Perpetuating the That's dream it. that the moon landing was real. I don't know. Even do, even if bringing don't, it to don't computers. Go there. I know, I'm joking. I'm not one of those. <clears throat> Um, yeah. So yeah. So anyway, he's, this executive producer's quit for personal reasons. He has said that it's personal reasons, and they've got the, the article. Then goes on to say stuff like, "Oh, we've got this really great guy on board, though," and then this is really happening, and then this, uh, and it's like, just bring the game out in some way, shape, or form, and then we'll tell you if it's good or not, and then we'll. You, they're just. You're right. I think they're just trying to make as much money as they can, and then release the game, and it'll be like. It's a massive hype machine. It is a massive They've already got the machine. money. Yeah, they've already is that, got... Is, it, look. is this the one where they can get the $400 yeah. ship in it? Well, I've heard that there are actually ships for many, many times more than that. Like, you can pay thousands of dollars for ships. What the hell? Probably more uh, on eBay as well, I bet. It's a game. I mean, like, you buy a game for somebody, it's not even a you play the game... game. And you and you're done. So why the hell would you buy not only a game that doesn't exist yet, but a hypothetical really cool spaceship within a game? Like, why have I got to pay four hundred quid for so? That's like me paying real money for a car in Grand Theft Auto Five. It'd be ludicrous. I just nick it. Why? Sam, do you know what's even worse? Sam, do you know what's even worse? It'd be like paying that much money for a car which you couldn't take out the garage because there's no game yet. Yeah. All you exactly. can do is walk around the hangar and look at your ship. You can't fly it. You got an IOU for one. Shit. <laughs> okay. It's like that, um, that Ferrari um, that you can buy for a ridiculous amount of money, but you're not allowed to take it home. Uh, that's the the Enzo, isn't it? No, Is no, it no, it's, no. It's no, it's not. Le Ferrari. It's a track developed Ferrari, but, uh, but basically, if you want to drive it, you've got a phone Ferrari and say, right, I will be at this race track on this day. They'll take it there, set it up for you. You drive it on the track, get out of it, and they'll take it back. That, yeah. that is that is a purchase for dickheads. That isn't it. That is a purchase for That's... people who are just are just dickheads. No, that I'm is, not going is... to say they've got too much money or more money than sense. They are just dickheads. But they have to have some money, and also don't, be a wanker. Don't care. You're just a dickhead if you do something like that. What's the point? Just, oh, I've got a Ferrari. <laughs> I've got two Ferraris. If anybody, one I can uh, actually drive. Any... The other ones in a garage. Apologies mm. to anybody in chat who may have signed up for that. You're a deal. dickhead. You're a dickhead if you sign up for that, and you can fuck off. <laughs> I don't think anybody is. Right. I, I, I assume this next link that I'm going to post into chat is a, a parody or something. I can't watch it obviously because I'm streaming, so I can't hear it. But I imagine it's just loading screens or something like that. What? What? I've just skipped through it. This uh, not GTA Five. Who put this in here? I think it was Steve. <laughs> What is it? And and is it? I tried watching it, but it wouldn't load. Um, it is just like a joke, but the reason I put it in is because it's got some fantastic reviews on Steam. People were saying, "Yeah, five out of five, definitely not GTA 5. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least it was no, on most Steam. honest game on Steam. That type of thing, and it's yeah. just like a snake game, basically. But the parody GTA 5, but it's got David Cameron in it and stuff like that, and you can do read things like piss on him and stuff. I'm looking at it, it looks ridiculous. Piss on it, it is ridiculous, and it's all been made in paint by the looks of it. There, there is there is, a, there is a porn movie called Not South Park. Oh. <laughs> it was just named then. purely so that people searching for South Park would find it. See, I have influenced uh, the stag beetle in chat. He's returning his Ferrari tomorrow, he says. <laughs> so I've, I've at least You're done one thing. you not returning it, mate. They've still got it, mate. That's the whole point of what we're <laughs> saying. You're, not <laughs> You're never had it in the first place. You're asking for a refund and they'll go, what? <laughs> refund on what? We've got the car. Yeah. What? Well, we, we didn't buy anything off us. Um, all right, uh, Sony won't set a price for Morpheus yet. It's too early, apparently. Again, this is a bit of clickbait, I think, this article, but... It's... Yeah, I, re I reckon they've gone back to the drawing board with it a bit since E3. Um, well, they've got the games, but the tech is shit. They're still the saying that they're still saying that I don't. I don't believe the tech is shit. I think that it is going to be pretty good, Morpheus. I think it's probably going to be one of the better ones. I imagine, but they may be improving it more, which they're going to be doing anyway. But I think more. This is probably. They said that in the article it says that they didn't announce the PlayStation release for. 
five months, uh, I think it was five months before the PlayStation 3 was released or something, they didn't give a price for it and they don't want to set a price too early in the future because of probably fluctuations in the market and all the other bollocks, but it's probably just marketing bollocks again. Chatting, chatting thing. A link in chat and yep. uh, I think this was being discussed in chat earlier actually by uh, Stag Beetle and a few other people uh, Team guilty of hacking PlayStation Network convicted of 5,700 crimes no, 50,700 Oh sorry 50,700 crimes and um, if this is the same one you were talking about he got a two year suspended sentence is that what it is? Yeah. Well like, what are they going to do with it? I mean, what does that work out at? If you divide 50,700 by two years, you've got the... <laughs> how long he's going to spend in prison for each... Not that each long one. for each one. What? And am I right in thinking a suspended sentence is not a sentence? Or not, he doesn't have to spend any it. time? Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, how does that work then? Does that mean he's already spent enough time in... No, it's, it's because he's not an adult. He oh. can't go to prison. I think there's a bit okay. more complexities around that. It's all bureaucratic nonsense, suspended sentences. Um, but yeah, it didn't serve any time at all and sounds sounds like nonsense. But anyway, we are up. We are up with um, with our news. We're done. In fact, we're done nearly on time as well. Bloody hell, I thought exactly. we were a bit early today. Done quite a lot of wittering, haven't we? So any other business, any other games that you want to mention or talk about or anything else that's uh, popped up? No? Uh no, it hasn't yet. Just no need. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ban you I from this show. Base Alpha game, it's actually free. Oh, I might already have it. I think. Um, no. You don't. Okay. <laughs> that, that's the end of that. Fair Thank enough. Um, Lou, do you want to play some Terraria, possibly? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm up for that. Well, I might. I'll go and sell out of the misses, and then I'll uh, come back upstairs and. I'll get the server on. Do you want to use the Do you want to use the world that I created with my base in it, or should we just start a new one entirely? Well, whatever we do, should we do this when we're not? Well, other people want to listen to, to what we're going to do after the show. Surely, surely. Oh, I don't want people to know what I'm. <laughs> I am already. I will probably shitting. do that at some point before I go to bed. I'm probably sure I will go to the toilet. So there you go. There's an insight into our lives. Okay, right. So anyway, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. It's been quite an active chat today. And we shall see you next uh, next Wednesday. If you are interested in anything we do, www.resonancearcade.com. We're on all of the other social media platforms, uh, including Google+. Plus. So see you next week, 7.30, Wednesdays. Bye-bye. See you later. I don't know what I'm doing.